All right. Oh, actually jumping in here right on time. Players are ready, and here is your countdown. Three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Con X5 here kicking off the 2v2 Elimination Cup. And again, a heads up, this is basically... Ooh, quick snipe off, off the jump there. This is going to be kind of an intriguing matchup. I think you have a couple players in Trinitech and Sir that are probably two of the most dangerous Elim players in this, in this event. Um, but of course can sometimes be inconsistent um, when they get hot they can be pretty much anyone and right now off to a really hot start against Zavage and Kurgan it's going to be a matter of can they play up to their potential Trinitech I think is one of the scarier limb players around um, just because he likes to be hyper aggressive um, and it's sort of a risk versus reward kind of streaky game style though right like it's it's shooting three pointers all game long you know Oh, and there's a snipe around the corner. Rocket's coming out. Savage is on top, trying to anticipate. Remember, we're looking for... Uh... We're looking for frag video highlights in this tournament, not just the win. Oh, but Trinitech answers right back with a snipe. Yeah, there's a handful of songs. Like I, I mostly turned off the music. In, uh, in the Unreal Tournament games, because, you know, whenever I was playing matches and stuff. But there's a couple of songs from both Unreal and Unreal Tournament that still kind of just... Oh, there's a mid-air rocket by Trinitech, and expect to see a lot of that from him today. He is a big hitter weapon player, which is to say you're going to see Shock, you're going to see Rockets. Um, it looks like they've actually got the Grenade Launcher enabled right now. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, but... Yeah, like I say, Trinitech, very high risk reward player. You're going to see him go for those mid-air rockets, go for those three packs rather than taking consistent damage. Probably not going to see a lot of Link and Stinger out of him, and that's kind of what we're going for today. See the bounce rocket right there. Oh, tries to get the rising boot jump rocket as well. Couldn't get the follow-up. Kurgan, though, falling down, and Sir snipes him down and already up 4 to nothing. Remember, we're going to be, we're going to be playing best of one map, first team to 10 for all of these matches. So let's move this around for clarification. The clips that they're uh, that they're taking for this event are from the players. So the players can mark their own, you know, ooh, nice fallen combo there by Sir. Coming around the corner, eats a rocket and taken down by Zavage. Nice defensive play there by Zavage, who uh, kind of walked into a difficult spot, but turns the corner, gets that link gun kill and pulling them right back into this one. But yeah, like I say, the players are basically going to be submitting, um, you know, rounds and times so that someone else could go back and do do the work to actually create clips out of them. Or maybe the players will be creating the, or, uh, creating the clips and submitting them themselves. Not quite sure what the structure of that is. But yeah, so anything awesome that happens, they will have a chance to see it, hopefully in a highlight reel. And there, so that middle area right there, right in front of Zavage, that kind of, kind of half circle, that is low gravity, and I believe that affects projectiles as well. So if you shoot something like a flak ball that's got an arc, it will change its trajectory. Oops, let's, uh, there we go, get over to Kurgan's view. Kurgan running around with that sniper rifle. Both players right now, one snipe away from death. So you're going to see some hide-and-seek peekaboo action going on. Sir already with the waggle through the window. And ultimately, that snipe coming in. There we go. Couldn't find Sir's player AD. It looks like he's number seven, so we'll be able to jump straight over to him from now on. I'm going board with him. Follow this rocket because, like I say, we're all having fun here today. Boom. <laughs> I... Oh, there's a headshot by Sir across the map and the follow-up snipe right there. You know, we talk about things like mid-air rockets and flat balls that we're looking for today. If we can see some back-to-back -back headshots to put down a team, that would obviously be... Uh, perfectly acceptable as well. Savage looking for the sniper shot here. This is, I think, maybe the first 2v1 situation that we've seen them have, Savage and Kurgan, in this matchup. So 
here we go though back to 101 savage with this nice fall away sniper trinitech answers right back with shock oh mid air dangerous play the nice wall run to escape it but savage does make him pay with a little bit of damage one more shot will do it savage putting them back on the board again five to two i think we were a four to nothing early on and then now we've gone two to one so uh trinitech and sir still inching their way towards victory but the pace has slowed a little bit. It looks like Zavage and Kurgan settling in here. Maybe getting used to this map. This is kind of an awkward map if you're not used to playing it. Especially, even in pubs, it gets a little wild. When you have to slow down and play it in a more organized fashion, every little kind of uh, gimmick and, and element of this map becomes a little bit more amplified. All those little lift jumps, all of the, the teleporters, or I guess the one teleport. So here we go, Zavage and Kurgan fighting their way right back into this when you see that sniper from across the map. Again, so many interesting ways you can peek on players in this map. It's both, it's open, but at the same time, there's a lot of uh, little columns and things to break line of sight. Kind of reminiscent of something like a race from the duel. Ooh, map list. There's a headshot by Sir. First one I think we've seen today. Oh, Sir with the friendly fire kill on Trinitech, though. But he does hang in there and close the round off to get his redemption. That is something to keep an eye on. You know what? We talk about frag video clips. We could very easily see some friendly fire kills end up in these clips as well. All right, Fall Fallacy with the host. I'm not sure, was, uh, was Fallacy playing some UT or was he on something else? In any case, welcome to the stream, everybody. We've got us a 2v2 Unreal Tournament Elimination Cup going on. Mostly looking for highlights here. This is basically, like I said a, before, a, a competition to see who can create some highlight clips. Um, of course, we will have teams win and, you know, finish top three and stuff. But I think there's actually prize money on the table for whoever can build the, uh, the nicest frag video clips. So 7-3, to three, though. We've seen uh, Zavage and Kurgan coming back, you know, fighting their way back into this one from four to nothing. But... Sir and Trinitech coming storming back, and you can see that now seven to three, couple rounds in a row, looking to finish this one off. The map is super fantastic. Everybody's going to be playing set maps, so round one is going to be oh, nice falling rocket there by Trinitech. Didn't see if he got full damage on that one, but that was a good uh, sort of instinctive reaction shot. Yeah, so the Unreal Tournament, it's probably listed as UT Pre-Alpha on the Epic Launcher. Much of what you're seeing here today is going to be community-made, so um, lots of mods, lots of weapon, movement, game-type modifications. Um, so very little of what we're going to see today is necessarily stock, other than something like, you know, the UI shell, essentially. So you might hear things like hit sounds, or uh, you might see... I think I've got my player model set to default, so that should look like the default. Oh, Trinitech getting... Stuck in a corner here, down with only 20 HP to go. Going to have to come up with something nice here. You see him back and through that door. Smart move, but Kurgan cuts him off. Takes the easy sniper shot. So, Trinitech and Sir still in control of this match. We'll take a quick look at the scoreboard. We'll go back through Sir's perspective, see what he's looking at. He's actually been putting out a ton of damage. Oh, but balls himself in the face. You hate to see that. Savage all by his lonesome now. Oh, and some more friendly fire. This time, Sir punishing Trinitech, but this time Trinitech survives, able to stand in there, get the kill, and push us to match point. So just like that, already 9-4. to four. Remember, we're playing first to 10 to get these matches rolling quickly. So the fall away sniper by Sir. Going to try to push up those jump pads. It's a dangerous place to charge. You see him using those crates for cover and perfect use of those rockets as well. Oh, and the mid-air drop shot by Sir. Rocket straight to the face. Trinitech follows it up with the shot kill. And I feel like I'm not seeing... Are they chatting? Hmm, not seeing chat on screen. That's a new one. Interesting. In any case, Trinitech and Sir winning their first match. Let's go back up. See if there's any other matches going on that we can jump into. This was the first one to start, so we did jump in there. 9-1. to one. Ooh, looks like... Uh, nice, I guess, is that Navarro or Naver? I'm not not actually familiar with some of these player names. And then Popo coming up 9-1, to one, big win over Hyperreal and Compo. 
Um, we got Fantasy and Demon versus Silver and Power. That's going on. We had Lass and Wasty's game against Shaddy Cat and Stoked Grom slash Ludwig. Is, is Stoked Grom Ludwig? Is that just another name that he uses? In any case, we'll jump into that one and see, see how we're doing. They're still on Super Fantasmic, so it looks like they maybe got a late start, which is good for us. It means that we get to skip the downtime in between matches and jump right in. Oh, Blimpo and Deceptos. Well, you know, it's a good thing that... Oh, that's right. You know what? I've seen Blimpo use that name elsewhere. <laughs> okay, so I think on the... Okay, so Stoked at Slope slash Ludwig meant, like, I guess if one of them needs a sub. I wasn't sure why they signed up like that. In any case... Oh, it looks like it uh, kept us in the same. All right, we'll back up here. Jump into what were we looking at? Godlike. <laughs> What's up, Zax, man? Appreciate the sub, dude. Uh, I think you're now six months. You should have an extra sub badge available to you. Okay, so it looks like we've got Fantasy and then the Last and Waste. So let's go to Last and Waste. It's two to one, so it looks like that might be the closest matchup left. joining us too. Already 36 viewers. That's pretty awesome for something that we just threw together. Like I said, we've been doing all of these little, you know, the COVID cup dual stuff. And this is kind of even more of a, of a casual thing. Just having some fun. So I appreciate everyone you know, jumping in and joining us here on a, here it's kind of a rainy, ooh, and last on a killing spree with that close range rocket. So obviously doing well, you see him using that low gravity area. So that, that spot, that kind of, uh, cylinder if you will down there that's all going to be a low gravity kind of like i say i want a tube a cylinder so keep that in mind whenever you see flat balls and uh, and people jumping around in there it's going to be sort of a willy wonka room situation because some really interesting things can happen there oh the rising shot shaddy cat had a really good opportunity to hit a potential headshot there again we're looking for highlight real shots so headshots Especially if we can see things like back-to-back -back headshots. If we get some mid-air rockets, that's really what we're looking for here. We want to see some, some big risks being taken. We'll go on board maybe with uh, Stoked Grom here. Oh, he's getting chased down by Lass and Wasty. And Wasty with the headshot. Lass and Wasty have coming out here. I think they were number three seed, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it looks like number three seed. So certainly one of the favorite teams to win out today. In Last and Wasty, you can see the MG by their name. These two teammates in the UT Pro League season. As a matter of fact, I don't know if they had a match today. Challenger League or Challenger Division for UT Pro League. Oh, there's another headshot this time by Shadowcat answering right back. And now Wasty's going to be all by his lonesome looking for the 2v1 win. Anti combo comes out. They shoot his ball. Luckily, avoids much damage from it. Oh, he's trapped in a, in a corner back here, putting his back to a wall. Trying to escape. Now he's doing a decent job of hurting them around. Basically trying to split them up and fight one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great mid-air shot right there, but down to 31 HP. One sniper shot will take him down. He's got both players down to one shot, though, if he can finish this off. This would be a nice map to, or a nice uh, round to steal, but there you go. The sniper shot from across the map taking him down. Putting them on the board now, 5-2. to two. And uh, this is actually pretty much a similar progression to what we saw in, in the last match where one team jumps out to a lead and the other one's fighting their way back in. We'll see that kind of back and forth momentum. There's nothing like adrenaline in this version of, of, of elimination um, to, to where there's like snowballs back and forth. So it's really all just momentum and in, in, in the players' uh, heads, really. Uh, that said, you will sometimes see tactics change. Maybe players want to rush the first few rounds and then halfway through the map, whether that works or doesn't, they switch up to being more defensive and then their opponents, of course, will have to adjust to that. Oh, nice combo there by Lass. Saw him throwing that shock ball and just waiting, waiting, waiting. Standing in there strong. Yeah, Sniper Rifle, the only weapon that does headshots. Um, I believe it does double damage across the board with headshots. In other words, I don't think there's any versions of the mod that, that change that, but I could be wrong there. Like I say, there's, there's lots of different versions of... Oh, Lass going for the piston. Falling midair combo shot. He knows he's trying to create some highlight reel moments. A 
and now he's stuck by himself but both players shaddy cat and stoke rom have to be careful one shot could put them down then they don't want to jump in one at a time you want to overwhelm your opponent especially with everybody down under 30 hp nice patient shot there by last baiting him out oh doesn't get the flak off in time stroke rock stroke uh, stoked grom i'm gonna call him stroked gom so many times today so let's just settle let's just lean into that but six to three putting them right back into this one is it 125 okay so so that's an interesting uh, multiplier there but Oh, mid -air. You see the, the close range rocket last bouncing around in midair. And so what you will notice for anyone unfamiliar with this game type, whenever you kill an enemy player or anytime a player dies, they'll drop a little, I don't know, a little care package on the ground. That package is going to basically contain a little bit of health and a pair of jump boots. Those jump boots are going to be what allows these players to bounce way up into the sky like that. Really create some interesting situations, both, you know, taking back high ground from your opponent, um, being unpredictable hitting some crazy midair shots that we've already seen taken. So we're on board with last. Um, we'll switch over to Shaddy Cat's perspective. Yeah, we'll see. You see what he's seeing from across the map, trying to get a pick, basically looking for them to peek their heads out. This is actually a surprising, like you look at the map and it's wide open. It seems kind of small. For 2v2, it's actually fairly, fairly, I guess, long. It's kind of a rectangular map. So if you want to play very defensive, almost like play like you're playing Counter-Strike or something, you totally can, hiding behind crates, you know, setting up peak shots through windows and stuff like that. So some of these rounds actually start off kind of slow. And then once players get into each other's faces, the falling sniper by Shaddy, that's a nice shot right there. Yeah, as the rounds progress, you kind of get four players then corralling each other. Um, and then it gets kind of kind of faster and faster in the midair rocket by Shaddy though, and the follow up shock primary. That's nice, uh, nice round there by Shaddy Cat hitting some really um, difficult, you know, midair reaction shots. So maybe settling in a little bit. It's seven to four, so still a big advantage for for Last and Wasty, but certainly Shaddy and Stoke Rom uh, putting up a pretty good fight here. And, and, and again, it's just, it's first to ten, so any team can get hot and finish the map off strong. See him shaddy cat going for those prediction combos teammate actually comes up from behind and gets the kill that was nice distraction you saw him down low and now wasty finds himself in a 2v1 situation he gets the first sniper shot off and now he's got the advantage so important to get that first kill and again whenever you run over that corpse you're going to get those jump boots you see the yellow streak coming off a of player's uh feet that's what that is it means they have a, a, a charge of jump boots in them so shaddy cat right there you see him using those jump boots to close the ground Oh, Wasty though getting eaten alive by that by that flak, and Shaddy chases them down despite having something like half of the health and armor. So, Shaddy Cat coming alive here in the middle of this match. No look now, seven to five, still a little bit of an advantage, but Stotgrom and Shaddy Cat making this one interesting for sure. And you saw that the nice move there. So that was actually a really nice rocket shot by Stotgrom. Last had gone up the jump pad and then dodged off the wall to try to make his movement unpredictable trying to make him difficult to hit he followed him in midair tracked him very patient just hit him with the rockets right as he landed really smart fundamental play there oh and there's the uh the link finisher wasted that time going for the sheer fire bet so you can see there's a lot of pride in the line here too like i say i think to my knowledge the only money on the line is actually in the highlights so technically, whether you win or lose here doesn't actually uh, matter in that sense. It's really about creating those big, those big uh, highlight reel clips. But you can see these players still don't want to lose. They still want to win this, even with no money on the line. A lot of pride at stake. Oh, Shaddy Cat with the mid-air jump boot combo. That's one somebody needs to go back. And uh, you're not going to clip from my stream because I didn't catch it. But Shaddy Cat right there with the jump boot fadeaway combo. That's one he's going to want to look at maybe creating a clip of because that was a nice shot right there. Gets them the win. Staying within two. So at this rate, Shaddy and Stoked are going to need to get 
a couple more round wins here to, to pull even because if they keep trading two for two last and wasty of course they're gonna hit 10 uh first i know i'm, I'm really a math genius if you didn't know but i can map it out we can do some calculus if you want Oh, Wasty getting the kill right there. So Wasty going to be able to... Oh, and, and that's the bait. And this is what you see in this game type, for those of you who might, might not have played it before. That that health slash jump boot pack was on the ground. Wasty knew it. Stoked Grom knew it. And it becomes its own sort of objective, kind of a game of chicken. Um, you, you can only pick up packs that drop from your enemies. So in other words, you can't pick up your, the one that your teammate drops and he dies. But you still use it as bait, right, for your opponent. Oh, uh, Wasty missing multiple snipers. Uncharacteristic. Wasty, uh, really, probably one of the better snipers around in elimination. So missing a few shots there. That's going to give Stoke Grom an opportunity to go on the run and maybe try to bait him into something. He still has a bit of a health advantage. He's going to need more than one sniper shot to finish him off, though. Uh, putting a lot of pressure on him with that link. Not a huge amount of damage, but does close that health gap just a little bit. And there's a big rocket. Oh, and a follow-up sniper and Wasty right there outputting hundreds of points of damage in a matter of seconds. You saw him throw that rocket, then dodge the other way. And while that rocket was in mid air, use that travel time to his advantage. Great fundamentals are right there. <laughs> What's up, Gitz? I've got a story to tell. I'll save it till after this match been on my chest for a while oh the mid air link so dangerous to go up top i mean really any jump pad any lift jump in this game is going to be uh, such a big risk that's why you'll see players going up and doing wall dodges things like that to try to stay unpredictable wasty has got himself in another two on one situation comes around the corner gets that flat kill takes one shock ball down to 15 hp shaddy cat trying to keep his team alive this is match point for wasty if he can get one more shot off could secure the win. Shaddy Cat, though, has been on fire the second half of this match. So he's going to go for that health pack, and Shaddy waiting around the corner. So what happened there? Had the Rockets out, just waiting to hear him coming around the corner. Hit him with the splash damage and no way to react. That is one thing that's, uh, I don't know about unique, but one thing to keep in mind with this game is that rockets do big splash damage flak balls and of course shot combos there's a lot of ways to shoot people around corners so you can't just come barreling around uh you know corners blindly you also have to be careful even if you have the high ground doesn't know oh, wow the anti-combo oh man so uh what a way to end it right there so whenever you shoot a shock ball and your opponent shoots it instead you know right as it comes out it's gonna blow up in your face do damage to you we call that an anti-combo it is uh <laughs> It's an unfortunate way to go and an unfortunate way to end that match. But it must be said, Soaked Grom and Shaddy Cat coming in as, I believe, what, the number five seed? Number six seed playing against the number three seed in Lass and Wasty. Lass and Wasty, an incredibly dangerous team. I mean, they're, they're th the number three seed, nobody would be surprised if they won this thing. So Shaddy and Stoked Grom actually uh, putting up a pretty good fight there. Losing 10 to 7, not a bad showing. And Shaddy Cat with that, that really that jump boot fadeaway combo. I think that's that was the probably the highlight of that game didn't really catch it on stream here unfortunately we saw it from the victim's perspective if you will but that might be one that he wants to mark down and go back and uh and take a look at and maybe submit as one of the highlight clips for this tournament <laughs> what's up man pure dimco hanging out in here gifting the sub to get so <laughs> Oh, man. All, chat is popping off already. Got to appreciate that. Ooh, Sir and Trinitech versus Demon. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to jump in there. Yeah, Demon and Fantasy already playing their round two matchup against Sir and Trinitech. This is going to be, I don't know, you might call it a marquee matchup. I mean, it's number one seed versus number two. We're playing on the Cheops remaster, so a much less... Uh, I don't know, a much better looking version of this map. Still still not fully meshed, but at least we've got some textures and some much better lighting. So props to the map makers that have all worked on that. All right, so four to one, Demon and Fantasy. Make that five to one off to a blazing start here against the number two seeds. Again, Trinitech and Sir, as dangerous as anybody, but potentially, uh, you know, inconsistent at times. 
take a quick look at the scoreboard. I mean, you can see the damage actually not all that uneven. So it looks like uh, it looks like Fantasy and Demon are probably winning these rounds by not a not a lot. Um, let's stop that auto camera if we can, so we're not just bouncing around. Right as we jump in, you see Trinitech and Sir, uh, I guess STD we'll call them. <laughs> so STD then taking a map so, or taking a, a round in this map. So you can see total damage still pretty even, less than 200 total damage difference. And in this game type, since you start with that extra health and armor, as you can see, 200 damage is really nothing. That's basically one kill difference between these two. Or one lives worth of difference, if you will. So actually a very even match, even though it's 5-2. to two. <laughs> uh, actually, Wasty, I don't think I saw the... Uh, I don't think I saw the flick headshot... There was a couple of headshots that round, and I didn't really catch it. It's also kind of hard, because there's like basically a one in four chance of catching any individual shot, right? So, so we're basically here just to spectate, watch these teams play. They will all, you know, be able to submit their own clips from their own perspectives using the live replay feature. They can create their little mini frag videos and submit those for, uh, for all of the monies. Oh my, hey, come on, come on, let's follow along. Oops, sorry, we're gonna we're gonna hit the right button here. That's what we do. Midair link coming out, but Demon and Fantasy now on a roll. Still look at that less than fifty difference in total damage output between these teams. The rockets and shot coming out back and forth. Trinitech though hitting some shots, but already down to twenty three HP. Oh, there he goes, though, with the shock juggle act. Standing in there, and it looks like he's going to leave that health for his teammates. So that's a smart move. I think he's leaving that health for Sir so that Sir can get stacked up. Knowing that 20, the difference between 23. Oh, there you go. And Sir comes around the corner, finishes him off, and, and STD fighting their way right back into this one. I mean, look at that. Like, like uh, actually ha having the damage lead is STD. So done more damage, but still down four rounds. It gives you any idea of... Um, kind of how clutch, I guess, like Fantasy and Demon. Sometimes it's all about the timing of your damage, right? Oh, big follow-away combo by Trinity Tech. He got bounced in the air, kept his concentration, and was able to land it. Sir now with a 2v1, but he does have more health than either of them. If he can split them up, all oh, the mid-air flak misses, and Demon smacks him down with a rocket, putting an end to that run. But that was a pretty good opportunity, and I think that's what we're seeing. So ultimately, the damage there that particular round wasn't so different between them. But if it's split between two players and you still got, you know, you only need one HP in elimination to be dangerous. So sometimes it's as important how, you know, who you hit as how much damage you do. If you do 100 damage and it's split between two players, not going to do you as much good. Well, that rocket hits him on the ramp. That's a smart play there by Trinitech. So when you're on a ramp like that, splash damage is so hard to avoid because it's almost like having your back to a wall. Midair shot, very easy, so that's going to set it up for a one-on-one -on -one spot. Oh, and Fantasy, so consistent, just walks up, snipes him in the face, nothing fancy. Take another quick look at the scoreboard. We'll go on board with Demon here and see what he's seeing, trying to close it out with match point. Oh, there's a nice combo catching, sir. And this is perhaps a situation where Fantasy and Demon might be punishing Trinitech and Sir for being aggressive, so... SCD, a team here that's going to be, I think, extremely aggressive all tournament long. That's just sort of their game. They want to get in there and make it, sorry, make it messy, make it kind of a brawl. Oh, two snipes in a row by Fantasy. If you get one more combo, oh, an opportunity to finish it off with a double kill combo there, but they kill him just before he can connect. That would have been a nice highlight reel finish to end the match, but instead, 9-4 to four and Trinitech and Sir fighting their way back into this one. Oh, that combo just misses doing full damage. Trinitech, lucky to be alive. Has the opportunity to answer back, but misses. Now, Sir, trying to keep his team alive in this one. Oh, Rocket coming out. And you can see what Sir is doing. He's baiting them to chase him up the lift. Gets the one-on-one. -on -one. That was a smart move to try to split them up. And another opportunity. Mid-air, Flak, though, takes him down. And so now he's got to play that game that we talked about. That game of chicken. Around that health pack, you can see the sniper shot lined up. That was actually almost a headshot. That would have ended it. 
and uh, and sent it to another round. But instead, Fantasy trying to track him down. They're listening for each other's footprint or uh, footsteps, trying to hear each other bouncing around the map. One rocket, one combo. You'd like to get safe damage, right? Like you'd like to be able to throw out a shot. Oh, up the up the lift. That's such a dangerous move. Sir definitely heard him coming. Had that shot lined up. Neither player could connect. Fantasy jumping right in his face in the fall down. Sniper shot hitting him and taking him out. So look at that. Uh, only about a 150 damage difference between these two, but a 10 to 4 match. So credit Demon and Fantasy. Again, knowing how to focus their fire is just as important as being able to do damage in this game type. So number one seed over the number two seed. We'll see who else is playing and uh, what we can jump into here. STD versus PhD. I guess that's what Fantasy and Demon are calling themselves, PhD. That works. Logotum versus Google Snipe happening right now. That could be an interesting matchup. Let's see. Lass and Wasty versus Kurrigan and Savage. Okay. We already saw Shaddy Cat and Stoked. They're playing, um, they said it's Inceptos and Blimpo. That's going to be, I guess, Navero and, and Popo, respectively. Well, let's go into this match. This is a uh, well got him versus Google Snipe. So this is actually your number five and number eight seeds, it looks like. So you see it's tied one to one. Someone in chat, if you if you know the answer to this question, let me know. I believe it's it's silver as opposed to sliver, right? Or is it? I think that's what I've been told in the past, but certainly let me know. I'd like to get the name right. Mr. Eugene S. Coming up against Google Snipe, which is Compo versus Hyper Real. We'll turn on some X-ray vision and two to one lead here for Compo and Hyper Real. We'll go on board with Compo. I don't think we've seen Compo in one of these tournaments before. I think it's the first time he's joined us, so. Cool to see, uh, you know, some new names around them. And definitely, as always, feel free to remind me if I'm mistaken. I don't think I've seen him in a dual tournament. Oh, Rocket's coming around the corner. You see him charged up. Ko just missing. So nice dodge there by Compo. So... One thing about these rockets, you will be able to hear them with only two enemy players in the map. Audio becomes so important because you're not just hearing uh, sounds of you know stuff being shot and charged all over the map. It's very clear whenever someone has those rockets charging around the corner, you can kind of time it, which you might see as players doing things like uh, like charging two rockets instead of three, and then surprising people around the corner by jumping around early. A lot of uh, different tactics can go in when you're playing 2v2 versus something like 5v5 or 6v6 that you see in public servers. <laughs> maybe that should be my next t-shirt design i should make a t-shirt that says uh baby time game maybe i just need to learn how to create games and just build my own my own indie game on steam it'll be a retro platformer oh a ton of damage output there by silver we'll go on board with him as he seems to be having a big round right now the flak ball following it up you saw the sniper shot earlier, dropping right down on top. The chance for a rocket. Instead, he's going to go for the uh, for the flak. It's not a bad area to pull out flak in that tight little corner. Lots of ways for the shards to bounce around. Compo now down to five HP. It would be kind of a miracle if he can pull this off because they can be so aggressive. Oh, and there they go. Nice move with the flank. So, one player to the front, one player to the back. Can't defend himself in two directions. Pretty straightforward, and we've got us a close matchup here, three to two.
Oh, there's a headshot by Hyper Real. Can he follow it up with a kill? Can't. You know, individual headshots are nice, but I think what we really want as he loses the sniper duel and then the sniper back and forth, so Compo finishes him off. And again, a back and forth match here. I mean, um, only eight difference in damage after six rounds to give you an idea of just how close this is. Oh, the mid-air flat comes up short. Compo in good position there. He put out the initial damage, though, so that should be helpful throughout the rest of the round. Oh, has the shot lined up, and both players go down. Silver with the Scorched Earth tactic diving right at him with the Rockets. Mutually assured destruction, but unfortunately, the only winning move is not to play, especially in elimination where staying alive is just as important as anything. As I said before, even with one HP, you can be dangerous because as long as you still have the ability to lay down rockets and snipe and anything. Oh, Compo had him lined up with a perfect combo opportunity. Didn't trust his instincts. Laid back off of it. And instead, he's still back up here, but staying alive. Only 10 HP. You can see him trying to push Mr. Eugene S off of that health pack. And the fadeaway combo there in midair with the jump boots. But Mr. Eugene S answers back with 5 HP. So not a bad attempt there. Putting out all sorts of damage, but could not make it happen. And back to four versus three. Early damage this round, though, is both teams being aggressive and just diving right in each other's faces. You see him using that using that torch thing for cover. Got to be careful, though, because they can definitely sneak up around you very easily, and that's what Compo is going for. Silver can't make that rocket connect, but he's going to be in a good position here to try to push them away if they try to push into him. <laughs> Dimco, if, if you hit YouTube, you'll get my YouTube. I do have a Twitter account, but I really haven't found much use for it. I mean, you can you can guess it. It's just Twitter slash ConX5. But like I said, I haven't really found a lot of use for it uh, at this point. But I don't know. Maybe I'll be active on it again sometime. It was over going for the, the mid-air dodge sniper shot. So many, so many subtle ways you can kind of line up your shots and set them up. You'll see a lot of players like, oh, nice combo. So what Compo there heard, he just heard him going up the jump pad, didn't even see him, threw that shock ball out a couple seconds early and just timed it perfectly and killed him around the corner. Nothing he could really do to defend himself there. So Compo and Hyper Real now taking the lead. I don't think we've watched much Hyper, much Hyper Real. Let's go on board with him and see what he can bring us. Ooh, combo's coming out. You see him lined up, and that's one thing you're seeing. Mr. Eugene S and Slip Silver right there getting bunched up around that corner. Very dangerous. A combo like that can just decimate them. We almost saw a double kill combo earlier uh, in the day. Didn't quite land it, though, and I think that will be another highlight reel we're looking for is someone to kill both players, especially in 2v2. That's so hard to do. It's not like it's 5-on-5 five five where there's just a ton of targets. You can get lucky throw out a ball, you know, hit two or three people with the same combo. In this case, you can corral the enemy players into one spot, kill two of them with one shot. That would be huge, but haven't seen it happen yet. So Hyper Real here has the health advantage versus both of these players. So if he can split them up, corral them around, fight them one-on-one, -on -one, he has a decent shot. And there's the sniper shot that he wanted. One more shot could do it, because I believe Mr. Eugene S will go down to a sniper shot. So he's going to try to push him around. Try to bait him up top. There he goes. Has a shot lined up and really, really patient, consistent play there by Hyper Real. <laughs> what was that level in Psychonauts? Was it the Milkman Conspiracy? Maybe you guys should enter the next tournament under that name, the Milkman Conspiracy. Aren't they making, they're still making a sequel to that game, aren't they? I wonder how that's going. I think they've been doing dev blogs and stuff. I just haven't ke been keeping up with it. Psychonauts, one of those games I need to go back and replay like every, every four or five years or so. That and Beyond Good and Evil. <laughs> I 
W was Milkman in Matrix as well, or was he just in Green Rev? Meanwhile, we're going to go on board. Oh, Mr. Eugene S. That is the caster's curse to jinx him. So Google Snipe right now on a roll. We saw back and forth between these two teams for the first half of this game. And the last few rounds have been all Google Snipe. You can see them taking a 700 plus damage lead now. And what before was dead even between the two. Oh, combo's coming out from above. Compo gets a little bit of damage with that flak. So you're going to see that middle area of this map. That middle uh, corridor is so dangerous whenever someone pulls out the flat cannon there. There's nowhere to dodge. We do see sniping being traded, though. So Compo here trying to find a way. And this is when you're when you're in elimination, this is almost like it's almost like playing with house money. If you get down to single digit health and you stay alive in, in elimination, at that point, any damage you output is considered gravy. So as long as you can just stay alive, usually I try to back up around the, the back side of the map. Because even one snipe, right? It, it's all like a win. So let's go on board. We've seen... Uh, I don't know if you've watched Mr. Eugene as much. We'll go on board with him. Early snipe takes him down to 85 over 65. Got to be careful there. There's a lot of ways to peek on this map and catch your opponents jumping out. We saw that, I think, bite Sir and Trinitech a little bit in the previous match we looked at. Ooh, and Compo with that peak sniper shot. You see Compo and Hyper Reel at the top. Super high combined health. I almost wish we could see, like, ooh, never mind that that rocket nails him, takes him down. Silver now with a bit of an opportunity. If he can hit a couple sniper shots, he could take this round right back. That rocket was huge, decimating their health. It's all going to be one shot away from death for pretty much everyone here. I think Hyper Reel might be able to survive a sniper shot. He's going to peek around the corner, and that's a smart move there, too. So if you have two players left, typically you'll maybe face check. You'll, you'll push the player with more health up forward to be a little more aggressive because they can take that shot. <laughs> I think, I don't know, Twitch changed its, uh, its, you know, revealing clothing, if you want to call it, policy. And I don't even know what that says anymore. Like, I've definitely seen people do hot tub, hot tub streams with no shirts on, guys at least. And obviously, uh, I don't think they allow women to, which, you know, is a little bit of a double standard, but in any case. And I know, I know, I know I've seen people do uh, fitness streams, right? Where they're basically wearing essentially underwear. I haven't seen a gamer, though, just stream just with their shirt off for the, just for the heck of it. Makes me wonder if that would be allowed. Oh, big full flack. You see the slide afterwards. Compo staying alive here. Mr. Eugene S with a bit of a health advantage, but he takes it right back down to dead even now with that snipe. So both players can survive one sniper shot. It'd be a question now. If somebody can hit the other with a rocket or a combo, it may take them out instantly, but otherwise this may be a bit of a protracted battle. So we'll try to... I'll actually turn down the music a little bit and let you listen to the footsteps a little bit. Listen to what these players are hearing. All right, time ticking down. They're going to start taking ticks of damage now in overtime. Oh, and a nice patient move there by Compo. Wanted to give you an idea there of what, what they're hearing, what they're going to use to their advantage. Anytime you go up a lift, anytime you go up that jump pad, going to make so much noise. Um, stream seems to be working for me on my machine. You might try refreshing the page. Uh, sometimes Twitch can get a little bit weird with desyncs and stuff. Mid-air rocket. Does a little bit of damage, but Compo gonna have to bail out of there. Probably a smart move. Does some damage, gets out, doesn't want to be caught between two enemies, because I believe friendly fire in this, in this event is 50%. Uh, Dimco, uh, unfortunately for that idea, uh, you know, that's not, that's not really social distancing, is it? Um, now maybe I could paint myself with the cat because the cat and I are, are, you know, we live together anyway. 
<laughs> Who gave Zax the ability to highlight messages? That sounds like a terrible idea. Oh, and there you go. Hyper Real with the snipe. So Google snipe coming on strong. Lil Gotham actually uh, put up a really good fight early on. We had a dead even match. And then the last handful of rounds just storming back through Compo and Hyper Real. Um, really coming up strong there. So another match in the bag. These are just going to be going on nonstop since we're playing round robin. So we're just going to be jumping match to match to match. Let's see what we can find up. You got Lass and Wasty versus Demon and Fantasy. That'll be a good one. It's two to two. Let's jump into that one. I want to try to get a mix of everybody's matches here. I don't just want to follow the top seeds, but this one definitely seems like a top matchup because this is going to be number one versus number three. We saw number one versus number two. And in that match before, I mean, you had uh, Fantasy and Demon versus Sir and Trinitech. Very, very even damage, if you, rem if you remember, but they ended up winning by something like five, six rounds. So now we'll see what happens when the number three seed, Lass and Wasty, who, like we said before, both very, very dangerous in their own right. And we'll see what they can do. Oh, midair flat coming out. Maps may play a role as well, so we're going to be on a race. This is going to be a map that, you know, any of these players that have played Duel will be a little bit more familiar with. If you haven't played Elimination in, in pub servers, you may not know Cheops all that well. But all of these players here, very experienced duelers. We've seen many of them in UT Pro League. In fact, you still see Lass and it's Wasty playing in the UT Pro League as MG currently in the Challenger division. Um, at the top of that of the standings there, I actually haven't checked to see what matches happened earlier today. But keep an eye out for those UT Pro League challengers still happening. I think there's maybe a couple weeks left of that. So four to three, Lass and Wasty actually in the lead here. Let's go on board with Lass, see what he's seeing. I actually think this is a map in particular that Lass and Wasty could excel on big. 100 damage rocket up top. And the nice combo to finish him off. Wasty across the map. Actually, no. Fantasy killed himself, so it might have been an anti-combo. So unfortunate, but that's going to give them a two-round lead. And uh, we'll go on board maybe now with Wasty and see his perspective. As he is right now, I wouldn't say dominating this match, but he's definitely got a big lead in the damage. And Demon and Fantasy already down to 10 and 14 HP apiece. I think what we're seeing right now is just the, the hit scan of Lass and Wasty coming up huge. They're both players that when they're when they're really on, their sniper can be deadly. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Now you see Fantasy being smart, circling around the map, waiting for one shot. He knows he can snipe either one and get a kill instantly. Just wants to try to catch them out one-on-one -on -one rather than 2v1. Oh, and there's the big flak. Knocking them away. Fantasy now with an opportunity to clutch this one. Was 2v1. One snipe could do it. Last gonna peek. Oh, he just misses that one. Anything that touches fantasy will kill him. Had the combo lined up and last couldn't complete it. Last now looking for one shot to end this round and give his team a three frag or three uh I guess round lead. Oh, and there's the shot. Fantasy stands in there. So the clutch by fantasy with 10 HP takes out both players. You saw the full flak. And that nice, patient setup on the sniper shot. Some good textbook uh, video gaming right there by Fantasy. Oh, Fantasy, though, getting caught in that little alcove, that ramp room. Takes another sniper shot. Wasty right now. Let's check his, uh, his percentages here, his accuracy percentages. Looks like it's not popping up for us. Well, that's fine. We'll just say it's a high percent. It's wasty right now seems to be really on fire with his aim. And one thing to note, players like this, players who can be like walking turrets can actually find themselves being very dangerous in, in 2v2 because they don't have to worry about being flanked as much. They can keep the opponents in front of them, uh, make those shots a little bit easier and, and can really uh, do a lot of damage and punish you for being aggressive. Wasty and Demon now one-on-one. -on -one. You see Demon trying to make use. Let's go on board with Demon. We haven't seen him throwing some grenades across the map. First time we've even seen that weapon used today. It's not used in all of the game modes. See those just trying to catch him around the corner. So Demon and Wasty both know that the other player is relatively healthy. Their teammates are going to communicate how much damage they've done. A lot of communication that's key in this game type. 
Ooh, Wasty got a free shot there. Demon was looking the other way, couldn't connect. So what they're going to try to do is, is they know they need more than one shot. Unless it's a headshot, they're not going to get a kill. In fact, even a headshot wouldn't get a kill. So they trade some shots there. Back and forth, they know they're still going to need another big shot. And so what's happening right now is their, their health is slightly ticking down. Every time that green sort of surge pushes, or every time I should say the, uh, oh, the time ticks down. But Wasey with the headshot to finish it with the exclamation point. So two things are happening in overtime. Time ticks down every couple seconds, and that also ticks down their health. So if someone has a big health lead and they're in overtime there, they're going to have the advantage that their player needs to be aggressive. And Wasty with the ambush. And then every time that that green pulsates, uh, that's actually going to show them where the other player is in that moment. Sort of a, of a low-frequency radar, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually don't disagree with you, Zach. So we're seeing a lot of uh, we're seeing a lot of teams here playing to win, which is just the instinct, right? Like these guys, you know, Lass and Wasty want to beat Fantasy and Demon. Fantasy and Demon don't want to lose to, to Lass and Wasty. You know, there's going to be a lot of uh, these guys know each other. They play in the same, uh, you know, play in the same pugs. They play in the same league, and perhaps in season three, they might even play in the same division if UTPL season three uh, ends up putting some of these players together but yeah I want to see some midair rockets I want to see some midair goose shots uh, we saw last earlier in earlier matches doing things like piston jumping midair thing to keep in mind you're going to have multiple boot jump charges dropped every single round so we've already seen a couple of nice midair rockets and combo type shots that, I think, is maybe where we're going to see some of our craziest uh, opportunities for shots come out. We'll move over to Lass's perspective. You see him giving chase. Demon getting caught back in the corner by the armor area. Nice wall run there by Lass to stay above him. Drop that rocket right down on his face. Now he has the high ground. Oh, the nice boot jump combo, but can't connect it. Fantasy being... Ooh, too evasive and splats him with the, with the flak ball right onto his face. Unfortunately for him, Wasty able to turn around the corner and finish him off. And now Lass and Wasty with an opportunity to basically turn the tables. Fantasy and Demon with a big win over Sir and Trinitech, the number two seeds. Lass and Wasty coming in as number three and a chance to answer right back and uh, take out number one seed or at the very least, you know, beat them. This is not an elimination bracket. It's going to be round robin, so there's not really elimination happening per se, but... Big rocket there by Wasey doing over 150 damage between the two. That's going to help him out a lot. If he can get one big shot on Demon, he can take him out. There's a big combo on Fantasy. There's the snipe, so one more shot could do it. Has him in midair. Next shot will get a kill. It's Wasey goes down, though. So back up to 9-5. to five. Demon and Fantasy. Remember, we reset every round with full health and armor right there's no uh there's there's no momentum necessarily carried over numerically there's no positive feedback loop in fantasy with the air rocket dropping down and there you go finishing that round off and there's two quick rounds for all stars bringing demon and fantasy back into this one only down by three but it is match point for last and wasty so no room for error oh and there's one mistake right there coming up that lift right into a combo fantasy and demon now both going to be Losing that health advantage they had earned. Trading shots here. Last going to get one on Demon. Chasing him down. Wasty, though, has to has to worry about being uh, caught out alone. And there he is. Last and Wasty weren't really teamed up there. They were kind of split up. And the 2v1 taking, taking Wasty down last now by himself. Gets one kill with the drop. Sniper shot. Big combo dropping down. He does have the boots in front of him. Jumps up with the flak. Looking for the full flak in midair. Actually drops down with the sniper. And another sniper. One more shot could do it. Both players... One shot away from going down. Last trying to seal the victory. Fantasy trying to keep his team alive yet again on the brink of defeat. One shot away from ending this match. You hear him using that lift to bait him one direction, popping out the other direction. Smart play by Last and MG. Lass and Wasty taking the win over the number one seed, Fantasy and Demon. So pretty impressive win there. You see uh, tons of damage output by both teams. What else do we have going on? Compo. 
All right, we have Shaddy Cat, Stokes, okay, that match, we've, we've seen some of them play. I'm trying to see if there's anyone we haven't watched. Are there any teams we haven't seen yet? I'm gonna check the bracket real quick. I'm gonna make sure we give everyone some, you know, some time here. Who's in Jagger? I don't know, we've got Jagger versus Savage. Okay, so Savage and, uh, and Kurrigan versus Blimpo and Imseptos. We'll jump into that one and see if we can bring it to you. Oh, right off the bat, Blimpo gives us a headshot right as we join an eight to one lead. So pretty impressive game coming out here. We'll try to get a look at the scoreboard if we can. So a pretty impressive, uh, what looks like a potential win here for, what is this, this team Jagger, I guess, uh, Blimpo and Inceptos, that's Popo and Navarro um, playing on their, you know, silly alias Smurfy type names, I suppose. So Jagger coming in, oh, and ending it with the killing spree. So a big, big win there. We're gonna back out and try to jump into another game immediately, but impressive win there by Jagger. They are coming in the number four seed. So certainly uh, any of these top teams have the opportunity to come in and win. <laughs> I mean, you know, guys, uh, you can still give me money if you want. <laughs> I, know, I know Dimco's gifted some subs. I did add the donation link, so I know we had uh, someone, I think it was Exit or somebody was asking um, earlier, uh, the other day in one of our earlier casts. There is a donation link now, so if you want to throw money directly into my pocket versus subbing and stuff like that, that's there. Of course, you do still have the, uh, the merch store, which I'm working on. Definitely working to see about adding some more stuff and rearranging it and, and perhaps even moving to a new system, basically just trying to make that as clean of an experience as possible. Uh, and of course, any donation will go towards, if anyone wants to see different hit sounds, any amount of bits or donation, I'll uh, uh, I'll change the hit sounds. Basically, basically, like I say, I'll treat it like a, like a jukebox. Whoever's the last one to put anything in there, I'll let you determine which hit sounds we use. <laughs> well, Chuck E. Cheese is closed right now, so... Chuck E. Cheese tokens don't do me any good, do they? <laughs> don't, make my, don't make fun of my saddlebags, Zax. Besides, wearing those short shorts gives you the flexibility, so you can really get down there and do your lunges. You've seen Reno 911. Torpedo. There is the air rocket coming out by Hyper Reel. That was a nice air rocket. We've seen a few of those already today. What I really want to see, I want to see two players with the uh, the double jump boot, like air to air. <laughs> you see Shaddy Cat telling him, please clip that rocket because I have no idea where it came from. Oh, the peak shot, hyper reel here. Taking some, some uh, nice angles to try to take this one back. Remember, we do have a it is first to 10, so three to two, certainly very early on in this one. Hyper Reel now with the health advantage. We'll go on board with him. Overtime. So overtime here, players health. Gonna be ticking down a shot coming out there on Hyper Reel, so he has to be aggressive, turns the corner, finds him, connects and ties this game right back up. And yeah, Kaisu, this is basically Tam. I mean, Tam, Clan Arena, Elimination, whatever you want to call it, it's existed in pretty much every arena shooter at some in some form or another, right? So think about Tam with no handicap and no adrenaline. Um, um, the one key, like the, the, the unique part about this version of that game type, of that concept, is that whenever you die, you'll drop a health bubble that also gives you one jump boot charge. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You will notice players, you know, dropping an item whenever they die and, the, and either of the opponent players can pick that up uh, get that one jump boot jump as well as some health. 
some long range fighting going on there. Stoke Grom going to try to chase him down. This is a dangerous hallway to, to get pinned into. See him coming out with that link, but really he's going to want to cut him off. So, oh, he had the combo lined up, had him exactly where he wanted. Couldn't connect it. Compo is somehow able to escape. And right as we move to him, he goes down. But nice escape there by Compo, even just staying alive that long. Really got himself uh, backed into a corner, but showed some good map knowledge, able to get out of there. So a one round lead. You can see even 300 more damage for, for Google Snipe. But Hydrate here, able to take the round lead. It's all about the timing there. Oh, nice flank right there. Stoke Grom coming around the corner. The combo and primary finisher it allows his teammate to grab that health. So they're both pretty much at starting health again. Stoke still at 120 over 100. Shetty Cat at 117 over 78. So Hyper Real here, going to be in a tough spot trying to fight his way out. So let's see what he can do. Baits him into a combo. That's a good start. Oh, it's stuck down by that shield belt area, that kind of uh, trough, if you will. Very hard to get out of there, that area once you get down into it. <laughs> Kurgan, thanks for the dollar, man. Uh, Kurgan, did you want to put that dollar towards changing a changing a hit sound here? Or did you want to just were you just throwing me throwing me some bits? Because I appreciate it either way. Oh, rockets coming out hyper real, and then answers back with the uh, with a combo. Didn't even have a chance to adjust the camera there. The trade goes in their favor, and just like that, Hydrate taking a 6-3 to three lead, doubling them up. And we've seen them do that. We've seen Shaddy Cat in particular got hot in a, in a match that we saw earlier today. Big Flak primary. See him closing that gap. Eats a little bit of Flak himself. The compo going to be down to 34 HP, so one sniper, one uh, really one shot from most weapons going to take him out. Got to be careful. You see him back it into a corner and baits Shaddy Cat into the combo. So Compo with a nice retort there. And there you go. Takes him down with 11 HP. Stoked Grom left alive, but has pretty high HP. And that, that shot on Hyper Real going to take him down to a 105. So if he can get the kill on Compo, I think Stoked Grom right here is going to want to figure out where, where Compo is. You see him pulling out the Stinger. Wants to just eliminate that one target. And then he can focus his few... There it is, and there you go, focusing his his uh, attention on Hyper Reel. So a little bit of an advantage for Hyper Reel, but one shot can completely negate that. Oh, almost a headshot there by Stoke Grom. Yeah, accidental adrenaline. Matter of fact... I, th I think I remember Fnatic in, was this in the final of, okay, is Git still here? Maybe you can answer this. CPL 2004, land final. It was Fnatic versus SK, I think, where somebody on Fnatic, I forget if it was, I don't remember if it was Lauke. I mean, that's that would be like the obvious guess because, you know, just the biggest name that most people know, but I forget who it was. It might've been Lauke. Um, accidentally turned on invisible in the middle of Antilus, I believe. I think it was invisibility. I don't think it was speed. Because we were just sitting here and we like, we were watching the match and we saw it happen and we go, oh, in interesting tactic. Hmm. And then we just see, her, see him like start yelling. We're like, oh, okay, so that was not intentional. So uh, yeah, unintentional adrenaline usages were always, uh, uh, always fun times. What's up, everyone? Yeah, inching inching towards 50 viewers. Pretty good turnout today for a, what is ultimately just a fun little 2v2 elimination tournament. We've got a full bracket here. Eight teams are going to be playing round robin, so we will see plenty of action. Of course, you can, as always, use the bracket or brackets command in chat to check out progress of that. No eliminations happening, so everyone's going to get to play, um, I believe, what, what would it be, seven rounds? Yeah, everyone will play seven rounds. 
first to 10, best of one. So it should be pretty quick. We're basically halfway through this one already. Speaking of which, Hydrate here has just gone on a tear. I mean, I was talking with chat, you know, trying to trying to engage with my viewers. Um, and, and meanwhile, they're just on a roll. Let's go take a quick look at the scoreboard. Pretty even damage between the two. Shadow Cat and Stoked Grom. No one player here really shouldering the burden. They're just playing very well right now. Um, so Adrenaline and 2k4 in, in stock, you had um, Invis, Regen, um, and what did they call it? Was it Berserk or whatever, where you shot twice as fast? And then in the um, Editor's Choice Edition, I think, in a bonus pack, they added the ability to turn into a random mesh prop from the map. Oh, that's right. Yeah, speed, booster, and Viz Berserk, and then oh, and then they added um, they added some goofy ones. So they added the ability to turn into a prop. Did they add like a like one to shrink you or something like that? Like they added some really interesting ones. I forget which ones were mods though, and which ones were were actually built in. Yeah, you could definitely do it. It might have been a separate mutator that they that they shipped with it, um, but you could absolutely... Uh, meanwhile, Stoked Grom and Shadow Cat finishing this match off strong, dead even when we joined back and forth game. And I think they took, what, seven rounds in a row or six rounds in a row or something like that. So strong showing by Hydrate. Um, Shadow Cat um, and Stoked Grom really uh, showing themselves to be a team that could potentially show us some upsets today. Shrink was a mutator. Okay, I remember having a shrink option, and then I, I know, I know you could turn into a prop because it was completely worthless. You would turn into like a giant concrete block or something, and you're like, okay, yeah, nobody's gonna see this coming around the corner. Um, it wasn't useful at all, but it was it was kind of hilarious. It was it almost, you know, I hadn't thought about this. That mutator almost was prescient in its ability. Pre prescient? I think I pronounced that right. It basically was prop hunt for TF2 before prop hunt. Now, I don't know if prop hunt existed in prior games, um, but prop hunt was hilarious in TF2, and that was basically halfway towards that. If someone had just made a mod with that in UT2K4, that would have been great. That would have been like the car ball to, uh, to Rocket League uh, progression. Oh, we got a close one here with Fantasy and Demon versus Blimpo and Inceptos. Oh, and we're on Quest on this round. This map can be fun. Now, Quest... Uh, come on, loot up. So, Quest, while I while I personally have major issues with the visibility on this map due to all the bright colors, big combo, brought him right up to him, couldn't finish him off, and there's the Sniper, though, on Fantasy. And an 8-5 to five lead now for Inceptos and Blimpo. Though, again, uh, we'll reiterate for anyone who's been joining us here. We are mostly looking for highlight clips. There's a little bit of prize money at stake here, and it's not for the winning teams. It is for the teams that give you the best highlight reel, or I guess the player that gives you the best highlight reel. So all these players are going to be keeping track of all their crazy headshots and moving combos and midair shots and direct rockets and whatever they can do. Clipping them out, um, you know, recording them off the live replay system and sending them in fantasy and demon not giving up in this game only down by two and that's really very doable especially uh, on a map like this you can really catch your opponents off guard if you can catch them with a combo like that you know if you throw some rockets in and you can get one kill immediately on this map if you can focus someone down in fact though we just saw blimpo taking out demon now a 2v1 fantasy is going to be backed into a corner with the number of rounds to stay alive Taking down two more rounds, and that will give uh, Blimpo and Inceptos, I think they're playing as Team Jagger, the win. Oh, big damage there. Fantasy getting trapped down in that area. It's a really tough area to get out of. Big flat primer. You could take him down here. Has a one-on-one. -on -one. If he can pop out a headshot or something, could get lucky. There's one quick snipe. Blimpo still has 
four to five times the amount of health. So that's going to be a tough spot. Blimpo finishes him off, and it is game point now for Team Jagger. But yeah, I mean, honestly, if, if I had to choose one game, if I were like stuck in a you know deserted island and that whole bit, oh, almost a mid-air bio shot by Blimpo. Going for the home run shot and, uh, you know, not for nothing, the highlight reel shot. Meanwhile, Inceptos takes out Demon. We've got a 2v1 on Fantasy. If he can pull this one off, keep his team alive, it would be huge. Stuck in a one-on-one -on -one down low. He's got them both in front of him, though. This is a bad situation for your team, Jagger. Both players in a tight area running right into his rockets. Took Inceptos down to eight health and pretty much even with Blumpo. So Fantasy has a chance here if he can isolate them. He can split them up and take Inceptos out, get a one-on-one. -on -one. And now we have a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Very even health. There it is, even the advantage. Oh, that, that sniper shot, that's, that's what he wanted. And there it is, one more shot will do it. 25 HP versus eight. Blimpo can finish the match off with a falling sniper and he does it. And 10 to six, Blumpo and Inceptos coming out on top. <laughs> so you see them already talking about, so if you see that mentioned in chat, like, like clipping and highlighting and stuff, that's what they're talking about. Because again, that is kind of what this event is about. Demko dropping some bits in. Appreciate that, Demko. For someone who uh, it, you know has gifted, well, everyone can see as how many subs pure or Demko has gifted. If you look at the top of chat there, just finding new ways to donate every day. So appreciate that, man. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us, uh, Mr. Eugene S. And Silver versus Shaddy Cat and Stoke Grom. That might be a close one. I want to make sure we don't neglect anyone. Is there anyone we haven't shown enough of? I mean, I think we've got, we've gotten everybody at least one match, and that's that's really the key. Uh, what was the first? We had Zavage's team. It was it Zavage and Kurgan? We've only seen them once. Let's see if we can find who they're playing next. <laughs> yeah, I'm running low myself. I've, I've, you know, I don't I haven't been drinking a ton of booze during this whole, you know, the. Uh, I guess quarantine thing. Yeah, let's bring you short. Google Snipe versus Savage and Kurgan. We've had Google Snipe in a couple matches, but Savage and Kurgan only won, so I want to make sure we spread the love. But yeah, like I was saying, I haven't, I haven't been drinking a ton because I know that if I get into that habit of even just drinking like, you know, two or three, you know, two or three beers a day, and then all of a sudden I've gained like 20 pounds because I'm drinking 500 extra calories a day. And you know, I don't want to get into that habit, but I have been kind of cracking open my, uh, I've got a couple bottles of High West whiskey. Um, got the campfire, and then I got, I think, their prairie one or something like that. Nothing super fancy, but, you know, something you can throw a little bit of water in and, and sip on. But that is running dangerously low. I think I've got one beer left as well. Like MF Doom. Ooh, hyper real. You see him with the rocket, almost the fall away sniper to finish it off. Doesn't happen, so we are dead even now. Hydrate and Google Snipe. I think this could be a really close match. Both of these teams have shown the ability to put together some good rounds. Oh, that turnaround sniper by Hyperreal. You saw what he was going for, just slightly over-aimed. Just a couple of pixels off there. Would have been a nice turnaround shot. Let's go on board with Compo. He's got really the, the biggest health advantage, though, his teammate. So you see these teams right now actually being a little bit careful. So this is a map where you can close the gap pretty quickly. So you see things like charged rockets, combos, uh, goo shots coming out. Right now, both of these teams are playing at a distance, trying to get that pick, and they're both just whittling each other down. I mean, you look, a total of 47 health remaining between all three players. So anything will get a kill. All these players could pull out the enforcer and still get a kill with one pistol shot. There you see the sniper shot, but look at that. 10 and 27 HP respectively. And for anyone who doesn't know, whenever you die after the round is over, you do see the remaining health in your opponent's life. So it's almost like when you lose a hand in poker and you realize you shouldn't have.
Some rockets popping out there. So far, really, just looking like a fairly uh, consistent play between these two teams. They're, these teams are definitely playing to win right now. They're they're grouping up. They're trying to uh, to flank, and they're really beating e beating each other up. I mean, again, another round where uh, Hydrate comes out on top, but 22 and 46 damage respectively or health respectively remaining. Oh, Rocket's coming out, looking for the juggle, but instead, Kurgan gonna get blasted away. You see him dodging up that lift. So whenever you dodge up a lift, uh, basically does like a, I don't know, like a like an extra fancy lift jump. Lets you move around, go a little bit further away. So you're gonna see those escapes a lot of times, but however, it does still give you a pretty predictable trajectory. So you move quicker, but you're still very predictable. Let me move over. There we go. It's the compost perspective. Trying to finish this one off. Savage with 9 HP. This is a good chance for Google Snipe to take another round back. There it is. Only down by one now. And these teams so far are tug of war. We've seen a couple of matches now start really dead even though. And then see a team just go off and win five, six rounds in a row. So always very curious to see that happen. So a quick shot there to take him down. Now got Kurgan and Zavage looking for to extend their lead. Rockets charge up. Oh, the grenade kill by Kurgan. Drops it underhand right into his mouth and says, eat it. I think that's the first grenade kill of the day. And there you go. 4-2 lead for Hydrate. Um, let's see. That's an interesting point, DC. Um, okay, well, I should try, try refreshing the page if it still says duel. I was doing a lot of changes to the settings kind of in the beginning of the stream, so I wonder if, uh, I wonder if it like got updated whenever I was halfway through, uh, you know, changing them or something. In any case, quick kill there. We're going to go on board with Savage down to 10 HP. One shot can still take out Compos. So this is basically ooh, an insta give situation. Now 10 HP versus three. They both got the stingers out. They both know that the other player is weak. Tense moments. Oh, and there you go. Pulling out the shock. And pulling back with N1, so a really, really dead even matchup so far. We'll take a quick look at the damage differential. Only about 60 damage difference. Savage right now having having the biggest game so far. We'll stick we'll stick with his perspective. See what he's seeing and what he's doing. Uh, BIDC, do remind me to check that out to see. I don't know how much. I guess I can control mod powers, right? not something I really looked into. I think I just left it as default. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I can let mods change the title whenever I uh, whenever I mess something up, by all means. Ooh, flak to flak battle though. Down low, Zavage gets the best of him. Actually pulling out the sniper. Hyper Real though still has 120 HP, so if he can split them up, you, know, you see the trades. He doesn't want to trade though. He needs to get one player down so he can grab that health. Oh, and close range rockets, so all in his face. Those rockets, got to bounce them around, take them down, and just like that, another two fret, or another uh, two round lead for Hydrate. And this, I think, up to this point, has been as even as any match so far, but again, we've seen so many matches where the second half, one team goes in a roll. Let's see if these two can continue to give us a really exciting one. Hyper with a couple snipes back and forth, just trading targets. 
And you see these teams basically fighting revolutionary war style, just kind of lining up across from each other. Ooh, that rocket almost nailed them. So almost area denial with those rockets, right? Throwing it at the lift, daring someone to jump in there. And the patient shots, I, we've, I've noticed that at a Hyperreal um, all day today with this. His aiming, his aiming style is very, uh, very patient, very deliberate, um, very much uh, prediction based, right? Throw your crosshair where they're going to be, wait for them to be there, and then click. And it's allowing G-Snipe to shoot their way right back into it. See if they can tie it up this round. Look at that, look at that damage distribution for Google Snipe as well. 1740 versus 1719. That is dead even. A couple more snipes coming in back and forth, and this time uh, G Snipe actually taking the the health lead early on, trying to tie this one back up at five. If they can get one more shot, Kurgan is going to be on the run, and there it is. Didn't even have a chance to switch over to Kurgan's view. So five to five, halfway through this one, tied up, and we'll be first team to the next five rounds now. We did have a couple new followers that I'd like to uh, shout out to. So I think it was Sasfaria, if I'm pronouncing that right. And Flo finally followed. Flo's been in here before. Actually, Gits hadn't followed me before. Salt Gaming saw that. Darkest. Thanks, guys. I don't know if you guys came over from Fallacy, if you guys just found us. But definitely, uh, if you're new to the stream, feel free to, uh, to holler. And obviously, uh, feel free to hang out at any point. Um, primarily been an Unreal Tournament stream, but we're getting into some other games as well. We did some Diabotical, maybe do some Valorant stuff, or... Ooh, diving right into that Link Gun, though. I was like, surely he's not going to jump up the jump pad directly into a Link Gun. That's just suicide. Yep, he's just going to... he's just going to suicide. That's fine. So Kampo here, basically, you see what he's doing. He's just trying to choose a couple of choke points, playing uh, very much, oh, but very deliberate, waiting for them to, uh, you know, come through the doorway. Unfortunately, guessed wrong. Kurgan and Savage actually circled around the map, flanked them, almost got the opening shots off, but instead they go, they uh, have to back up because they come up empty. Kampo making a pay, having a big round so far with those snipes. Still needs a couple more shots. There's one on Kurgan, one more shot. Teammate takes him down, and it's basically a drag race at that point. At this point, I think this might be one of those 10-9 games. I don't think we have any way to mod elimination and make it uh, require a two-round victory to win. But I feel like this is one of those where if these teams at this point, it's like if they played 20 matches, it'd be 20 to 19. with a falling sniper shot just misses and Campo maybe got caught out of position there. So kind of fortunate that shot missed, but let's go check out uh, Kurgan's perspective, see what we're seeing. These two teams have both been super, super careful with their approaches here. None of the players in this matchup have been the types to basically be uh, the big initiators. So sometimes in, in elimination, You'll see players like we talked about Trinitech before um, in our first matchup being the types that want to dive in there and initiate the fight and just kind of like jump in your face. So actually g Snipe here needs to be careful. Zavage has a big health lead on both of them. One shot could take them both down. 
You see him pulling it out. There's that one bullet kill with the Stinger. And it would only take a couple to get the kill on Compo to take the lead. And there it is. The follow away missed the combo, but got two primaries in a row. And back up to seven to six. I don't think G-Snipe has had a lead yet in this match, though. They've been coming back dead even. Trading rounds, and there's a big headshot by Savage to open it up. That could be a big uh, momentum changer right there. Every time Hydrates jumped into the lead, g snipe has been able to fight their way back in, but you get an early headshot like that. Gives you a huge damage advantage early on in the round. Let's see if they can um, capitalize on it. There's a couple of shots there by Zavage. Really just playing so consistent, both of these teams. And there is that flank, knowing that he's basically going to get a free shot while his, uh, while his opponent was shooting at his teammate. And a two-round lead. We've seen two-round leads by Hydrate before. We've seen G-Snipe come back. Um, we'll go on board with Compo and see what he can see. Again, that early round head headshot, such a big momentum changer. So Zavage uh, and Kurgan sticking together, and that's a smart move because Zavage there getting stuck behind that lift. That can be a really tricky area to escape, but when you have teammate cover from up top, helps a lot, and there's a shot from across the map by Zavage. And Hyper Real now trying to stay alive here. This would not be a good situation if they drop this round. They would be at match point now. He does have 96 health to play with. Kurgan now gets a shot on him, draw even with him. So if he can isolate them... Maybe he wants to try to focus his fire on Zavage. He has him in front of him. He's going to have to back away, though. Kurgan chasing him away. Oh, he went for it all with that combo. Came up empty in the chase down with the link. And 9-6, to six, Hydrate coming on strong with three straight rounds. Looking to close it out. Ooh, there's a nice combo to open things up. And that will send... His opponent's on the run, but Hyper Real goes down. Compo, the only one left alive. He's getting chased out. Only one HP for Kurgan. Anything will kill him. So Compo only has 31 HP, but one of his opponents down to one. Oh, that's not where he wants to be in midair going up against. Ooh, Zavage instead gets knocked away. Zavage takes him out with the flak. And from what was one of the most dead even matches we've had of the day, ends up going down to 10 to 6. You can see only a couple of hundred damage difference between the two totals so not a bad showing by google snipe but hydrate continues to just find ways to pull out these rounds all right we'll head back to the browser we've got a couple of different servers that people are playing on oh so it looks like there is some utpl challenger division action going on looks like the duels for lol got versus latam going on This was the match we just saw. A Mesa versus Absolute. Um, <laughs> well, I don't think Power and Mr. Eugene S are an Absolute. Uh, Google versus PhD. I think that one may have already happened. Sir and Trin. That's an interesting one. Sir and Trinitech versus Blimpo and Inceptos. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so Unreal Carnage Hub may be uh, having some issues with its with the information it's showing. In any case, we're showing Surin Trinitec versus Blumpo and Inceptos. Right now, Inceptos. Last one alive. He goes down. So Surin Trinitec need to win five straight rounds. It's going to be a tall order, but this is DM over. This is a map. That is small enough. You can make some crazy things happen. Sir right now actually having the the game uh, of the match as far as damage output is concerned. Let's see what he can do. Has the big 97 damage flak ambush, and that's the kind of shot they're going to need. Again, we talk about that free damage, so no retaliation damage. Turned around, got the shot off. 
got away clean. They're going to have a huge health advantage leading into the rest of this round. But can they capitalize? This is such a a great map for ambushing. So it's it's obviously, you know, open enough. You can see all the sniping happening. You can close the gap so quickly, though, since it's essentially like a circle. <laughs> hey, Tasca's. How's it going, man? I appreciate the bits. <laughs> oh, and there's a sniper, Sir now, down to his last potential life, but only 13 HP for Blimpo if Sir can get this shot. Pull one step closer. He's got Stinger out. You can see, trying to grab that health. He's got it. Oh, he decides to be aggressive, looking for the 360 mid-air boot jump. Looking for that highlight. Blimpo's going to go mid-air. Sir plucks him out of the sky and keeps his team alive. So there you go, sir. Definitely going for the highlight real kill. Not going to land it, but he will stay alive. Keep his team in it. Get another opportunity. But yeah, I mean, as far as these events go, um, I, I think the goal is to have dual events every Wednesday for, you, you know, geared more towards North American just due to the time zone, but evening North American time, and then have something kind of uh midday north america early evening europeans are around you know this time on saturdays and what happens on saturdays might be switching up sometimes it's dual um you see we're doing elimination this weekend um, i might not even be around to cast everyone but but at the very least we're trying to get some consistency that people can kind of get an idea of when they can you know when they might want to schedule some time to play and as i'm yapping blimpo and incepto is taking this one so we're seeing a ton of shakeups. The final rankings will be really interesting to see in this one since we're just playing round robin. There's no elimination. Um, there's no brackets or anything. We're seeing a lot of uh, lower ranked teams winning their matches. But of course, in 2v2 Elim, like I say, any team can get hot and really make something happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Saturdays and Wednesdays largely. Um, I know UT Pro League, obviously, Challenger Division's happening on Saturdays right now, but it should be ending soon enough. By the way, that's utproleague.com for anyone who hasn't been made aware. Uh, we've got Epic Division and Challenger Division. Epic finished a couple weeks ago. I was casting that. We've got Challenger Division finishing up. And Season 3 in the works i don't know what all has and hasn't been announced by that or with that i know we're still going to be waiting to find out which teams end up in which divisions there was some talk of maybe making epic division eight teams instead of six for season three and there's a lot of a lot of talk going on so keep an eye out for those kind of details but um it's a big money league that it's been recurring and of course that's alongside all of these little uh, community events we've been doing so you can see hyper real and Compo down six to nothing. Fantasy and Demon coming out strong against them. I can't tell if Shaddy Cat and Stoke Grom are going to have an, uh, a match coming up right now. I'm going to let the server browser refresh and see what we can see. It looks like Zavage and Kurgan might be against Stoke Grom and Shaddy. If that's the case, that might be a good one to bring you. All right, so I'm seeing that we are on round six, so moving right along. Um, you know, like I said before, this is a single limit, or not a single limit, it's just a best of one, first to 10, round robin, so certainly not intended to have uh, any kind of crazy amounts of, of matches played today, but already keeping things rolling. We're two hours in, and actually about half an hour of that was just building and waiting for everyone to get up, get up and running. Which is good because I can smell food cooking. So, so the longer this event goes, the worse at casting I'm going to get, and the more angry I'm going to get. <laughs> All 
right, well, it sounds like all of the matches are getting set up right now, so I'm going to take this opportunity to take a quick break, grab some water. I'll throw you to an intermission screen, let you jam out to some music, and we'll be back with the last couple matches here coming up in just a bit. Okay, it looks like we do have these round six matches live. I'm gonna jump into that one. We talked about uh, Stoat Grom, Shaddy Cat, Kurgan, and Savage all in one. I think that's gonna be the one to take a look at. Actually, we do have Lass and Wasty versus Inceptos and Blimpo. I think maybe maybe that's the one we're gonna jump into. That's gonna be a very intriguing one. I haven't taken a look at the final or at the current rankings, but that one could have some implications. All right. It looks like we're on campground, so this is an interesting map for 2v2 elimination. Prediction is going to be huge on this map. You can do things like drop combos and rockets in areas and get that, you know, if you can predict someone a couple steps in advance, you can get a ton of extra damage completely from behind cover. All right, so dead even so far, 2 to 2 See Wasty pushing up on Blimpo up top, gets that opening sniper shot. Oh, and Septos getting chased down. Now he's going to be on the run. You see him running down low. Last going to just dive in his face with rockets, and they're just going to surround him, bounce him around with rockets, and this is a tough spot to be in in the middle of the map there. Not a whole lot of room to uh to really maneuver whenever you're getting just bounced into the air like that so mg taking the lead now again these two kind of in the middle of uh of the seeds but last and wasty right now have had a really great tournament so far if they could take this win i think that might that might actually get them at the top of the rankings again i haven't had time to do all the calculations it's round robin so it's kind of hard to tell where a team stand until you're done but then Wasty with the chase down link, putting it up to a two round lead. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. Oh wow, Wasty with a huge damage lead so far on everybody. Oh, Blimpo versus Wasty with those rockets out. Such a dangerous spot to be in. You see them both bailing out. Last actually goes down in the one on one versus Inceptos. <laughs> oh, 
Ooh, Wasty with the combo there. You saw him, timed it perfectly, but a nice dodge there. A nice just backup by Inceptos. We'll go from Inceptos' perspective. There we go. And you see him down low, but he has the health advantage. So he's trying to be aggressive. But with Wasty down to 22 HP, all he has to do is hit one more shot. But instead, Wasty smacks him with a couple sniper shots. And now, now Wasty can be defensive. He's actually got the health advantage, but he still dives out. And Inceptos stands in there. So nice job. Uh, keeping his focus. Both players less than less than 25 HP. A little bit of really anything. Stinger, Link, Enforcer shot. Like anything would have taken him out. Shock balls going out all over the place, but Inceptos not really able to connect any damage on it. Meanwhile, his teammate gets singled out, taken down, and this is what. Lass and Wasty have been really good at so far in this tournament is focusing their fire, choosing one opponent, taking them out, going mid-air, going to be very dangerous, 18 HP, and there he goes, still survives, so Inceptos steals one away right there, and that ties it right back up, that could be a big turning point, Mesa looked really strong the last couple rounds, but then that was one that they probably should have taken. Jagger over here. I, think, I believe it's Jagger is their team name, if I'm not mistaken, right? Able to steal one away. We'll see if they can ride that wave. And they do actually focus them down. Wasty now getting double teamed. So turning the momentum right back around, taking the lead back and doing the exact same strategy, basically. Just picking a player, trying to catch them onto the side, or out uh, alone on the, off to the side, focusing their fire, then fighting 2v1. And that's really fundamental, uh, you know, elimination. That's just... That is your base level strategy. Um, if you want to see the game schedule, you can go, you can use the exclamation point bracket command in chat and it'll link you to the challenge page. Oh, and Septo's missing that sniper. You see him being really uh, cheeky with his movement there. Uh, also missing the mid-air flax, going for those highlight reel shots. And there's the full flak, killing spree for Inceptos, trying to finish this round off. Wasty, though, has an opportunity with one more shot to take him down. And Inceptos gets the kill again on fire right now. And up to a two-frag lead. That's four straight rounds for the red team. Blue now, Mesa Gaming. We said they had an opportunity to end up at the top of the rankings if they could take this match, I think. But spoiler time for Jagger. They can throw really the rankings in a disarray at this point if they can take the win over, over Mesa. And another strong victory there, so don't look now, but Blippo and Inceptos coming up big. Inceptos right now has just had a huge last three rounds or so. See that flat coming out, trying to anticipate that wall run all the way around mid to get back around. Oh, and it had a combo lined up on last. Last probably should have eaten that one. And then instead, he eats his own shock ball and then goes down. This could be another turning point for that momentum. Last able to take out Blimpo after that one. So a series of unfortunate events happening. And that's going to give MG a chance to fight their way back in, pull back within two. And we'll see if they can go on a run of their own. Oh, and there's a quick pick on Blimpo. It's going to be 2v1 for Inceptos. Inceptos down to 70 HP. Got to be careful here. He's going to be trying to isolate Lass, who has lower HP. And there's the kill. And with that extra health, going to give him a little bit of survivability. Wasty doing the smart thing and trying to force a fight. Close that gap. Doesn't want to make it a protracted battle, but that fall away combo is going to force Wasty to rethink his situation. He still has a significant health lead. So as long as he doesn't give up any free shots, he should be okay. If he trades damage, he's probably going to win. We haven't seen a draw yet today. Oh, and that nice twitch shot by Wasty. Pure instinct there. Catches him up on the bridge and pulls back within one. Oh, and Wasty there now getting in his grill with the rockets. They both isolate kills. Blimpo ends up with a little bit more extra health, but both players will have 
a charge of jump boots. And that could come into play on a map like this with so many areas where you can take the high ground. Wasty knows exactly where he is, but couldn't quite pinpoint where in that room. Blimbo's going to back out and look for that sniper shot. One advantage Blimpo has is with that extra health, he can trade snipers. So if they both peek around the corner and they both catch each other, Blimpo's still going to be on the advantage there. Go look from Blimpo's perspective and see what he's seeing. A full 140 health. Looking for the grenades. Going to give away his position, but he has so much HP, he can afford to, to give up a shot, like we said. And there's that one shot. Actually, there's two shots. And just like that, Wasty closes the gap. And now Blimpo, with time... And the start being a factor here, he has to consider his HP levels. Oh, and there is a shot to even it right back up. So now Wasty down on HP. Answers back, and they are dead even. 75 and 71. Now it's down to 52 with that other shot. And the finishing blow. Blimpo stands in there. Winning that hit scan battle and pulling back ahead by two. This round is critical because if MG wants to come back into this one, winning four straight rounds is going to be very difficult. They don't want to have to trade back and forth or they're just going to run out of time. Oh, and two quick snipes. That'll make it a one-on-one -on -one scenario. wasty has got a little bit of a health advantage. We'll go from his perspective. The goo doesn't come out quite in time. Wasty now with double the health, we've seen that what this can do and give you the ability to be a little bit more Selective with your shots, and now Blimpo down to 40 HP. Takes the jump pad. Very dangerous. And Wasty, you see the aggression there. Once he knew where he was, just dove right in his face. Knew that he could tank that damage. So smart play to pull back with N1. And this is where MG needs this round. Obviously, it's not match point quite yet, but going up 7 versus 9, or 7, or seven to 9, would be so scary because then you have to win three rounds in a row. Gives you no margin for error. Waste is going to be running around looking for... Oh, there's a little bit of rocket damage. Nothing huge, but 55 still going to be a significant factor. Both players for Red Team are stuck down in mid. 5 HP for Incepto, 69 for Blimpo. This is a dangerous spot for them. They're grouped up, and there is that rocket around the corner. Last managing to stay alive with 11 HP, but like we said before, and there is that finishing blow. As long as you're alive, you're dangerous. And there we go. Tie game, 8-8. Eight eight. I think this is as far as we've gotten into a match today tied up. So great match between these two so far. Remember, it is first to 10. So whoever takes this round will be on match point. Wasty with some early damage catching that, ooh, that jump pad. But there you go. Answering right back is Inceptos catching him up on the bridge. Damage coming out all over the place. He last down to 32 HP. He's getting chased down. He goes down, actually. Wasty's going to be on his own. You can bet his teammate told him that he did damage to, to uh, both players. There's a big combo taking out Blimpo. Now Inceptos, though, jumping up top, getting him with the Rockets, and that will make it match point for Red here. Mesa Gaming trying to come back on top. Or I should say back even, I should say. I should say, I should say. Ooh, opening link. So interesting move, putting a lot of damage out there with that Lincoln and a lot of pressure on last to stand in there and keep his focus. Blimpo now one-on-one -on -one versus Wasey. Both players completely stacked. You see the ambush there not coming up. Wasey's going to wait for his moment. There's a fallaway shot. So Wasey now with 140 health advantage. Just looking for one more big shot, a combo, a rocket, anything to then engage and finish this off. Still a minute left in this round though. So time not quite a factor yet. Oh, and that sniper by, by Incepto is going to make it dead even. 105 and 65 for both players. There's another shot and dangerous jump there by Wasty. He's facing down Flack. He's got to run away here. He needs one more shot, and he pulls it out too late. And Incepto's with the mid-air snipe going to close it out. 10 to 8. Red team coming out, and that will throw the rankings into disarray. Um, at least as far as my memory is concerned, because there's been so many... Lower seeds winning over higher seeds. I think in this case, it was a number four beating a number three. 
um, as far as the initial rankings are concerned. So I have no idea who's going to end up uh, ahead in the final rankings at this point. Um, so let's see what else we've got going on. Okay, so we do, it looks like we have the ends of a match in our server over here. So we're finishing up our round six matches, round seven coming up next, and that'll be the end. Um, it looks like the admin team, they're kind of talking amongst the players to see if they want to try to finish things off with elimination bracket. Really just depends on the availability for everyone. So Sir and Trinitech you see here up on Kapo and Hyper Real. I think this is a map that Sir and Trinitech could actually excel on just based on their play styles. You can be super aggressive in it. Oh, meanwhile, gets comboed from above. So Kapo fighting him off. Sir's going to throw down some combos from above and just look for that prediction shot. There's so many ways to do that in this map, but Kampo knows he has the health advantage. He's going to sit back. Quick look at Sir, still down in mid. Kampo's going to be on the run, circling about around the columns room. You see him just sweeping that crosshair around, checking, you know, basically doing check downs, right? Oh, but a combo from below. And so Sir heard him stomping around up there, got him down to 10 HP, and Sir... Snatching victory from the Jaws of defeat there. Combo was in a great position there, but just got anticipated. And with that combo, took him so far down. So nice job by Sir listening for his footsteps. Sir now one on one with Compo, very similar to the end of last round, but this time Sir has the health advantage. So now we're going to see can Compo catch him out with a prediction shot. Has him lined up and just like that evens it back out 49 versus 44 HP. Sir just coming up short with that flak ball. Had him lined up but couldn't quite make it connect. Compo answers back with a snipe and kind of a carbon copy of the last round, but rolls reverse. So Compo keeping Google Snipe alive here, 8 to 5. Sir now playing chicken with the shock right now. Big shock duel. Comes up the winner. Now Hyper Real, <clears throat> Hyper Real gonna be all by his lonesome with a health disadvantage against both players. Very, very tough to overcome. He's gonna have to get some kind of damage here with a rocket launcher, maybe a headshot. Very tough situation to get yourself out of in a map like this. And there you go, nine to five. So now Sir and Trinitech trying to finish this one strong. STD on match point. Oh, and a quick pick on Hyper Real. Looks like he was trying to be aggressive and they turned right around on him. Isolated him, took him out, and this is going to be tough. A tough ask of Compo going up 2v1. Again, with a big health disadvantage. So Sir and Trinitech coming up strong in, I believe, the round six matchup here. Yeah, it looks like this was round six for them. Of course, because he was on campground. So round seven, the last round coming up next. We're waiting for these matches to get up and running to finish this thing off. So let's take a quick peek actually at the rankings so you understand where we are leading into this uh, this last round. So after all of that, you can see round seven coming up right here. Um, actually, that's not gonna, let me refresh that page. There we go. So round seven here and you've got Jagger undefeated right now. 
So they're six and zero. Oh, Lass and Wasty five and one. So who do we have? We have Lass and Wasty taking on Google Snipe, who we just saw in action, and then Jagger. That's Inceptos and Blumpo. They'll be taking on Lol Gotham. And if they win that one, that'll guarantee them uh, first place, I believe. So let's go jump into that one. So we're gonna look for Jagger versus Lol Gotham. And uh, see if Jagger can continue through, be undefeated. Um, again, it is round robin, so. So we got Fantasy and Demon. Oh, actually, it looks like a close match here. Let's see if we can jump into, the, into this one for the very end. <laughs> by the way, today's stream has been brought to you by HEB Texas Heat Trail Mix. They're not a sponsor, but it's the only thing keeping me alive right now during this stream. Um, if anybody knows anyone who wants to be a sponsor for uh, snacks for me, definitely let me know. Oh, there we go. Catching Shaddy Cat and Stoke Grom taking the map win or the uh, round win to force a map point for both teams. So here we go, all tied up at nine to nine. Give you a quick look, dead even with the damage. And it all comes down to this round. Combo's coming down from below. So Stoat Grom and Shaddy Cat got the high spawn. That's gonna be a little bit of an advantage. But you do circle around a lot more on this map with some of the changes that DC made. You can close that ground a little bit better. And I think just the movement in this game you're not necessarily just going to hold that high ground the whole time. Oh, he had a combo lined up through that ventilation shaft right there. Didn't trust it. Might have gotten him a big damage spike there. Instead, going to drop down and Stoker. I'm going to look for that sniper. Comes up short. So Zavage right now looking the healthiest with 85 HP. That's why he's pulling out the stinger, trying to get that finishing blow. Shaddy Cat with 5 HP. Stoker with 37. And Zavage just trying to close this one out strong. Winner of this round will take this match. Ooh, Stinger coming out. That's going to be very difficult to avoid, but they actually do a great job. Kurgan, meanwhile, down to 15 HP. Oh, and the snipe on Zavage. Everybody down under 35 HP. One shot will kill everyone. And there we go, it's up to Kurgan right now. He's the last one alive coming in versus the Link. Can't quite hit the flak and hydrate, over hydrate, <laughs> 10 to nine. And the closest match we've had so far today. I'm glad we were able to jump in here and bring you the end of that one. All right, so hydrate, over hydrate, on over, if, uh, if you can keep up with that one. Um, it's possible, so we were looking for Jagger versus Logotum. It's possible that Team Zavage may need to play Logotum first. <laughs> Blimpo with the uppercase T for some reason. I refuse to try to find any other way to pronounce that, that butchered name of yours. <laughs> Popo 5 -O. It's way too many syllables. Nobody got time for that. So yeah, it looks like Logotum is playing Team Zavage, Zavage versus Kerrigan, or Kerrigan rather. So I wonder if we could find Google Snipe versus Lass and Wasty then. We do have Lass and Wasty in a server. We're gonna keep an eye on that. See, Sir and Trinitech against Stoat Grom. 
and Shaddy Cat. That one also getting ready to, to pop up soon. But really, first place on the line, that's going to be Jagger versus Lil Gotham. But we got to wait for that for that other match to finish first. We might be able to bring you that one. But if, if Lassen wastes his game against Google Snipe happens, we can follow that one as well. Because they'll need to win that one to have a chance. And then I think they'll just need to have to hope for Jagger to lose to Lil Gotham, which uh, would be certainly an upset. But anything can happen in a limb. Ooh, round seven gonna be on Bone. Or in this case, Bone Bone. This is gonna be an interesting map 2v2. It's one that, not unlike over, you can close the gap really quickly. There's a lot more ways to, I don't know, there's a lot more stuff in the way. A lot of stuff to dodge off of, lots of, you know, pillars and such. Um, you know, Mash, honestly, I haven't caught a whole bun bunch of great shots on my stream myself because it's sort of a crapshoot in a limb. You really have no idea who to follow, right? Because someone could pull out a crazy headshot and you've got basically a one in four chance of seeing it. Uh, Shaddy Cat, I believe, had that uh, that boot jump fadeaway combo in round one way back on Super Fantasmic. That was pretty impressive. I think that one looked pretty cool. Uh, Wasty was saying he got a headshot or two that looked really good. There's been a couple of direct rocket hits. Um, I think Fantasy had one or two mid-air rockets that might have been good, I think, when we looked at them on a race. But I think all of them would definitely need to be uh, clipped off of the, the, you know, the live replay system and really given the proper frag video treatment. And, of course, we're only looking at one out of four matches at any given time, so plenty of opportunities. I'm sure we'll see some cool stuff. Players are ready. Here is a countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 jumping into the last round of our 2v2 elimination tournament. It's all about the highlight reel. We're on DM Bone Bone, UT3 remake. We got maps from all over this series coming out today. And even other series, right? We have campgrounds uh, that we saw last round, so. Oh, and Lass and Wasty going down the first round. So Compo and Hyperreal have been a very dangerous team today. Lass and Wasty, though, have only lost one match. So I don't. I think they would certainly be the favorites here. If Lass and Wasty can win this match, it will keep them in the running to potentially win the whole event. They're down one win, essentially, to Jagger, who's uh, awaiting their final round opponent on the other side. And if Jagger wins that, they'll be undefeated, and of course they'll take first place. But MG here, trying to keep their hopes alive. Oh, there's one thing about this map that makes it really conducive to highlight real rockets just like that one. Three rockets in a row by Wasty. But yeah, as I was saying, so one of the keys to this map, there's so many lift jumps and so many jump pads. Whoa, there we go. There's like a lot of opportunities for you to be basically in midair. Last gonna jump in here and get some early damage with the shock primary. Oh, and a nice combo from below. This is another map, too, where high ground can be can be a, a little bit dangerous. So you think you're clear, you think you've got the advantage, and then all of a sudden, flak balls and combos and things just come out of nowhere from below. you got to constantly keep moving on this map. 
Oh, close range flat ball does a little bit of damage. Huge combo though on Hyper Reel. Gonna be bouncing him around with rockets and Wasty comes in with the rockets from behind. Erasing him and just like that, quick round, four to one on MG's side. So Rocket's coming out right here. Nothing really hitting this time. We've definitely seen some big damage output early on in rounds. Gonna tweak the game audio for you just a little bit so we can hear every little crunch and splatter. So Compa now with an opportunity. Big health lead on last. We'll see if he can make it happen. Try to pull right back into this one. Yeah, the fisheye lens. I mean, there's a reason they use fisheye lens for cinematic effect and all the old skate videos, and of course a lot of the a lot of the frag videos as well. It also gives you a sort of like the distortion level gives you almost like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It almost gives you like a focus effect, right? It sort of distorts things more to the side. Oh, big flat primary by Compo catching him up the jump pad and the following snipe takes him down and G snipe not going away, sticking around in this one. It was a really a big start by MG, but if they want to keep their record, push it to, to a six and one instead of five and one. They're going to need to try to uh, keep their focus because like I said, they still have an opportunity to win this tournament. Yeah, I'm not sure what all fat. I mean, he obviously had the mice at one point, and he had the uh, uh, the sound cards. Um, I don't know how much of that is. <laughs> you see, Wasty asking for rocks only. Maybe looking for one last opportunity to get that highlight reel shot in. Oh, Wasty dives right in, though, makes a pay. Juggling him into the corner and last with a three-pack. And just like that, Compo goes down instantly. You know what we need, and I'm, I'm, it might actually already exist, so maybe I'm just uh, behind the times. We need the gaming equivalent of Rap Snacks. You remember the, like the, 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 the heartless corporate cash-in that was Rap Snacks from the 90s? I think they're probably actually more well-known now than they even were back then, just because of how, you know, weirdly sell-outy they were. We need that with gamers. We need, like... Esports people to be on the front of some some stupid gamer snacks, right? Oh, maybe that's what you're talking about. Maybe, maybe there is some. I'm sure there's some sort of like energy bar thing that's like, oh, this makes your brain work quicker. That's why it's eight dollars for for an energy bar. Ooh, almost kissed a smiley face there. We haven't seen a lot of flak boobs on the day. Mostly been a lot of flat primary coming coming into play. So last you can see here, looking for the uh, the combo. Now, one thing you might see from a highlight reel perspective, if someone can hit a combo underneath, you have a lot of room to blast someone across the map here. If you can hit them from underneath with a combo. Send them flying, finish them off with a midair snipe. Uh, that would be certainly highlight reel worthy. Wasty here with 30 HP standing up against 105. You see him using those jump boots to try to just get out of harm's way, be a little bit unpredictable if possible. Ah, but the chase down with the stinger and hyper reel. Draws even, five to five. So MG started off on fire. Google Snipe still hanging in there. They've kind of been one of those pesky teams all day long. So right now they're sitting in sixth place in the standings, but they've kind of just hung in there versus a lot of teams. And, uh, you know, made life difficult even whenever they lose. Oh, 
Oh, there's a big combo coming out on a compo, appropriately enough. Hyper Reel still has 120 HP, though, so if he can keep his back to a wall, catch someone charging him from one direction, escape the other, he can get out some quick damage on someone like Wasty, or maybe even eliminate last here. If he can get one more shot, he's got Wasty coming up behind him, though. He's going to have to be careful here. Looking for the rocket, going to miss it, and Laz just cool and calm, sitting there waiting for him to come up the lift. Or the uh, jump pad, rather. I'm not sure if he... I'm honestly not sure what happened there. Did last push him into that jump pad with the shock primary, maybe? Ooh, he's going to go down. That's going to leave Wasty. Last one alive. Only a one-round lead, so... Oh, the mid-air rocket's, though, going to bounce him around. Wasty looking for the mid-air snipe. He's going to go down. And Hyper Real with that headshot. Turning it up and tying it up. Ooh, last. Got to be careful. He almost got turned on there by Compo. He actually didn't take that shot because he wanted to be, you know, look for higher ground. Oh, the nice combo smacking him down into the ground, and Hyper Reel now going to be in a tough spot. Finishes him off with the flat with the uh, shock ball and back up to seven to six. So MG still maintaining the lead, but just unable to pull away. Last paying for his aggression there in combo. That's, that's probably the first flak boop I think I've noticed today. That smiley face coming straight to the face of Wasty. That was not that easy to say. I hope you appreciate that shot. But Wasty hangs on. And so now we're going to see 8-6 to six finally getting a little bit more separation here. Now the question is then, can Compo and Hyper Reel come back? Try to pull even again. They just sort of hung around and hung around. Keep picking them off here and there. <laughs> yeah, we should market some uh, something healthier, like maybe some some ga some uh, Razer Gaming Kale. I mean, you could always load up on carbs and bring your friends, right? That was a Nirvana reference. Oh, falling sniper shot by Compo might actually have a chance to uh, finish him off here. Oh, there he goes. Teammate Hyper Real following him up. So Compo and Hyper Real actually playing pretty well together as far as flanking, sticking together, focusing down their enemies, and staying in this one. Eight to seven over the number two current ranking and uh, potentially in the running to be number one team of Lass and Wasty. So you're seeing both teams actually playing a little bit more methodical now. I feel like the last couple rounds have decided to back up. And that's what I was talking about, how you'll see strategy shift throughout the course of, of an elimination game. That's what keeps it so that, you know, the team that wins the first round doesn't just win every round because it's not, everyone doesn't do the same route every game, right? Sometimes people are going to be more aggressive, less aggressive. They're going to flank, both go one side, both split up sometimes. Nice shot there by Compo. You saw last use those jump boots to try to stay unpredictable. Stands in there, takes damage, and hits the second one again to pull right back even 8-8. Eight to eight. So we might see another dead even games. Nice way to start or to, uh, to end the day. With some uh, with some close matches, rockets to Compo going to send him packing, and though he's going to have to back up and eat some more rockets. It looks like right now he's cornered just a bit, needs his teammate to swing around and buy him some some room. Instead, Hyper Real is going to have two on one. They're, they are both weak and two weak and two quick sniper shots can give him a nice advantage now. If he can just get one more shot on either one of them, last down to 10 HP, Wasty. Only 59. And you saw him using the jump with the dodge, or the, the, the dodge with the jump boots, rather. 
to get right around him. One more shot on last. That takes him down. And there's the rocket and the double kill by Hyper Real to pull it back in. Clutches it to give them now match point. And I talked about sending the, the rankings into disarray. If Google Snipe can pull this one off, that would be your current number six ranked team being the current number two. Would really muck up the middle of these rankings. Hyper Real, though, all alone here, gonna have to find a way to throw out some damage and escape. Oh, big damage with the combo, and there it is. And we are now tied up, and again, another match point nine to nine. It all comes down to this. Really close games coming at the end of the day. Ooh, so damage coming out. Last is gonna have to be careful here. He's being extra aggressive, but getting flanked a bit. I think that was hyper real hitting it from the side. Compo though down to one HP. We'll see what he can do to try to escape. He goes down to Wasty. Hyper real is gonna be the last one alive. Remember, this is one round for the whole match. There's one falling sniper shot. Two in a row on Wasty. Running away from last. One sniper could take last down. There's the shot. He's got one more opportunity against Wasty. He's gonna have a health bubble in front of him. He can play this however he wants. Wasty's the one that's gonna have to take a chance here hyper real comes around the corner gets one shot off one shot away from pulling the upset here and wasty trying to bait him but there it is he finishes him off and hyper real comes on strong at the end of this one going nuts in the last few rounds you can see mg with the damage advantage but we know that that doesn't necessarily matter g snipe made it happen when it counted taking that upset win and completely uh, confusing myself and the rankings so we'll take a look at the brackets but a nice a nice showing there I think we've actually seen between upsets and even just some good showings from different teams uh, we've seen some teams you know uh, have some good have a uh, some surprisingly good showings and who was it uh yeah Stotkrom and Ludwig with the with the seven rounds against last and wasty uh, in round one I mean we then last and wasty in round three, taking taking out fantasy and demon. So a lot of surprises. Um, now, granted, again, uh, this is really all about the the highlight reel clips. It's kind of the point of this whole um, exercise in this tournament. But still, fun to see some close matches and some some upsets and some comebacks and stuff. So here we go, Jagger versus Lol got him. This will be Jagger's opportunity to finish undefeated and take first place undisputed. Actually, I mean, I guess, I guess with uh, with Lass and Wasty losing that one, I think that means that that will go now. I think Jagger is going to finish in first place. It might be round based. I'm not sure if it's round based or win based. If it's round based, if it's based solely on the number of points, then Jagger will just need to win seven rounds this match to end up in first. If it's win based, they've already got more wins than anyone else. So in any case, we'll just we'll just go ahead and look at that magic number of seven. So Blimpo and Inceptos, that's Popo 50 and uh, Navero here playing as Team Jagger up against Lol Gotham, Silver and Mr. Eugene S. Here we go, it's game time, baby. Con X5 bringing you the last Big matchup of the day. Blimpo and Inceptos, seven rounds away from icing this one and taking taking the cup. Also, their last opportunity to get those big shots in, those highlight reel shots. That is where the money in this event is actually happening. Oh, the pancake by Blimpo dropping right onto Eugene Ness's head. Making him some breakfast, trying to follow it up with some snot instead. Gonna take him out with a shock rifle. Silver's going to go up the jump pad, which is always dangerous on this map. You see the goo out trying to get the direct hit. Instead, eats an air rocket by Inceptos, and that was one I'd like to go back and see a clip of. Inceptos with the lift jump air rocket. So we'll see what Inceptos' uh, perspective looks like after taking map one. A couple quick rockets. It look like, looks like rockets are actually going to be a great weapon you know, highlight real shots or not on this map because it's not a whole lot of wide open area. There's always going to be a wall near you to take that damage. And there you go, Air Rocket. 
from Inceptos right in front of him. And that's what you're going to get. There's so many jump pads, so many lift jumps in this map. You're going to find yourself in midair a lot. So combos, midair rockets, going to be so deadly. Big combo falling away there. You see him throwing shock balls around the map, looking for the double kill. I don't think we've seen an actual double kill on stream yet. For, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. We've seen people get a couple of kills in, in relatively quick succession, but not an actual double kill. And there's Blimpo with the air snot on Mr. Eugene S. So that might be another one to go back and check out. Already a couple highlight reel moments happening in this, but 3-0 lead for Team Jagger, and they are four rounds away from taking first place. Oh, headshot by Silver, so... Well, got them, not giving up themselves. Trying to fight their way back into this one and maybe get some highlight reel shots of their, of their own. The headshot followed up by the two-pack. Silver gonna bring it back into three to one. Get themselves on the board. Ooh, almost another headshot there. You saw Silver had him lined up, couldn't quite connect. But there is the shock juggle. Eats a rocket, though, from Inceptos, so he's going to have to be on the run. Inceptos now last one alive. Let's go through his perspective. Almost eats the... Sorry, almost eats the combo. Almost answers back with a flak. Instead, both players get away, and there he goes. There is the flak boot by Silver. Right into Inceptos' grill, and it is now a one-round game. So oh, nice flank there by Jagger and another direct flak ball, two in a row in Septos right now, just feeding them. And another direct hit rocket, that one was just all instinct, turns the corner of the reflex shot. Oh, almost had a nice midair lift jump combo, but didn't quite realize it. Meanwhile, Blimpo on the other side there gets two kills with the Rockets. Didn't catch it. That might have actually been a legit double kill, which I think is the first one we've seen today. Falling combo by Inceptos. Trying to catch up in midair. He gets pinged down, though. They definitely saw him coming. So now he's the last one alive. A big combo from below, but they've got him tucked down in the bottom. One more shot for either player. Could be the end, but the rocket from behind takes him down to 18 HP. Four versus 18. Who's going to hit this next shot to take this round? Inceptos running around with the goo out, trying to finish it with style. It's also a pretty nice uh, option for area denial. Uh, didn't mean to rhyme that. You see him coming around the corner, finds him. Waiting on the jump pad, knew exactly where he was, and it's so tough to get out of a corner like that on this map. So there you go. Actually, I think we're one round away from Jagger here in Septos and Blimpo finally making it official. They, they've currently got the most match wins, and if they can get one more round here, they will have the most round wins as well and will lead the rankings in points. There's the killing spree on the nice dodging midair combo. And 32 HP for Silver. We are one shot away from declaring them the victor. But then we'll still have some more video games to be played here as they try to fill that highlight reel. And there you go. Round seven. That's seven more points on the board. So Jag are going to be the undisputed champions of this 2v2 Elimination Cup. Now, still some time though. Try to come up with a nice highlight reel shot. That is what we're shooting for. And for that matter, Silver and Mr. Eugene S also have their own opportunity to do the same thing. Three snipes in a row. Mr. Eugene S taken out. Blimpo. Oh, eats a rocket. He's going to be in midair. Facing down Inceptos. Chasing him down with the flak balls. Inceptos flak balls this game. 
have just been raining down pain all over the blue team. So eight rounds to two, you see uh, Jagger here, Team Jagger, trying to finish things off strong. <laughs> you see the goo in midair. Blimpo's been charging goo every single round, trying to get that highlight reel shot. You, look, you see him looking there for the flak ball midair. Doesn't happen. Going for the piston kill. Can't splatter him, but he does grab him with a rocket. And match point now. We've already sealed the deal. Blimpo and Incepto is going to win this tournament. Looking for one more opportunity here for some big shots. Oh, combo going to knock him down to the ground. So you got to be careful there, too. You can definitely goo yourself on this map just as easily you end up shooting it into wall or something. But let's go on board with Silver. We haven't been watching him much. Has a chance for a mid-air mid shot there, but gets knocked back. Actually gets Blimpo with a close-range rocket. He's down to 5 HP, though. He may have Mr. Eugene S. And there's the Rampage by Inceptos now, trying to finish things off strong. Mr. Eugene S. has about the same amount of health, and there's a snipe to put him away. Oh, and turns the corner and another snipe. So Mr. Eugene S. ends that spree with multiple snipes in a row. Nice shots there but still match point yet again for Team Jagger. Ooh, those combos coming from below, just barely avoiding them. Oh, close range. Mr. Eugene S getting surprised. Pulls the trigger, gets the kill, and another rocket behind him. And he's got an opportunity to pull another round out of the bag. Dude coming out. You see Blimpo again. Looking for the... Uh, looking for the dramatic victory here with maybe a mid-air goose shot. Looking for a direct hit rocket, but Mr. Eugene S just pushing him away. Looking for the round victory. <laughs> Catches him right around that corner and now up to nine to four. I think maybe uh I think maybe Blimpo and Aceptos here are focusing mostly on these frag video shots. Again, trying to submit to the highlight reel, perhaps get that prize money off of that. Oh, shot from the side, Mr. Eugene S. I think that was a flak ball that he ate. Again, Inceptos flak balls have been all over the place. Actually, that it's hard to tell whether that came from Inceptos or Blimpo that time. Silver now with an opportunity to try to clutch this one. He's only going to have 64 HP to work with. One flak ball comes up short. You see the piston. <laughs> Inceptos flying around the map. Oh, but the mid-air rocket knocks him away. And now Silver is going to be dodging that flak ball. You saw him stare it down all the way, and another one whizzes right by. It's like it's raining smiley faces on Silver. It's just like a fever dream. Somehow survives that deluge, and instead, can try to bait them into a couple more shots and maybe extend this match. And Silver can't quite connect. Limpo's up on top of him, looking for that mid-air shot. Oh, and the headshot takes out Inceptos. One more opportunity to take out Blimpo and stay alive here. Blimpo's going to be chasing him down with those rockets. Silver looking for... Oh, and the air rocket by Blimpo with the exclamation point. That's another one to clip out as Blimpo finishes this tournament strong. Mid-air rocket puts him down. 10-4 to 4 victory for Jagger, and they're going to wind out, wind up uh, on top, outscoring everybody else in our bracket. We'll take a look at that right uh, right about now-ish. We'll close this one out, I think. So yeah, that was the last match that we had to go 
Um, Savage and Low got him actually did, I believe, play before that match. Just needs to get reported. So pending a couple more reports for our, you know, kind of final rankings and how they all shook up. You will see Jagger here. With 70 points and seven victories and zero losses coming out on top. Look at second place, though. Remember I talked about how things were kind of thrown into disarray. Fantasy and Demon versus Lass and Wasty. I think we had, uh, let's see, Fantasy and Demon versus Lass and Wasty. Who ended up coming out on top? I think Lass and Wasty actually took them out 10 to 6. But then you look at the total points, 67 versus 62. Very, very close. Points, di points differential, even in Fantasy and Demon's favor. So again, uh, I don't think there's any prize money that they're throwing out for the final rankings here. I think it's all based on those highlight reels, but still a really close matchup. Um, or a few, a few close matchups here. Really close groupings of some of these teams. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna take a, we'll wait a couple minutes, see if they can get these uh, final matches reported so we can see what the final standings are. But yeah, pushing 50 viewers today. I do want to thank everyone for hanging out with us. Um, do keep an eye out. I believe I have the link on my Twitch profile there for the um, uh, for the Dual Cup coming up on Wednesday. I expect that to be a weekly thing, at least for the time being. And then Saturday's kind of going to be taking it um, week by week and seeing what happens, what you know, what game types we play. You know, like I say whether I'm around to cast them or not. Maybe they're going to run a tournament when I'm not around. You know, whatever happens, happens. But keep an eye on Discord for that. But I think every Wednesday night dual tournament is probably going to expect to see that become a regular event. So definitely come hang out with us um, Wednesday nights. Um, of course, UT Pro League still going on. UTProLeague.com. Be sure to check that out. <laughs> and Savage throwing a whole bunch of bits at me. Appreciate that, man. And appreciate everyone who... I know we saw some new, new follows, saw some new faces in the stream, you know, whether you're you're new to us or just, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're lurking in the background and don't chat much. Appreciate you hanging out with us. We've been, uh, been hovering right around that 50 viewer mark all day, and that's really pretty solid for a 2v2 alum tournament, right? So there you go. Final rankings coming up. Um, I guess this is the time to give a shout out. Thanks to everyone for watching, of course. Uh, appreciate all the players showing up and playing. We ran just over three hours, so not a bad, not a bad uh, total time for a Saturday afternoon tournament. Gives us all some time to enjoy our weekend. Shout out to the admins for running this. I think Fantasy was the one who threw up the bracket, um, and you know all the folks that do all the server admining and the map, and you know really all all the stuff that goes on in the background to make this quick and easy and fast for everyone to come in and get some organized games in. It's so much more fun whenever you can play, even with just one teammate, just playing with a consistent group, you know, playing seven matches, seven matches, I should say, all oh, seven maps too, in a given day. It, to me, it's so much more interesting than when you're just playing with completely random teams in a pub. Like, it kind of feels a little, uh, uh, you know, a little random. So, appreciate everyone for hanging out. Again, thanks for the players. Thanks to the admins. Keep an eye out for future events coming up Wednesday. And uh, nothing announced yet for next Saturday, but... Definitely keep an eye out for that. So thanks for hanging out, everyone, and we'll see you next time.